see the moonlight on the hotel. Whoa, I'm getting ready. Tell her what TV is in the hotel. Whoa, I'm getting ready. Got a corner on the telephone. Yeah, this is the Ushara the Messenger, and you're watching Talawa TV with the host and best. Today, we take it away. My Tanawes, good evening. It's possibly a late afternoon for some of you, maybe even heading towards or edging towards a new day here. Um, over in London, it is officially 12 past 11 here on a wonderful Wednesday evening. So I'm steadily heading towards Thursday, one step closer to the weekend, one step closer to Good Friday as well. Don't know if you guys um celebrate Easter. Let me know in the comments section. Um, so we've made it. We've made it to the end of round one. Before I forget, my man is massive, massive thank you to all the guys um in the comments section and the silent watchers as well over the last week and a couple of days. Um, thank you so much for sitting with me for hours on end. Um, we racked up quite a couple um, number of views there, um, well in a few thousands um, in combination, that is. So thank you guys so much for sitting with me night after night. We spoke about so much. We laughed. That was the most important thing. We laughed on a few occasions. Um, last night was a little bit tense though wasn't it i can't speak for you guys but for me last night was a little bit tense there a little bit cagey um but we got there in the end and this is your official reggae girls show tonight we're going to be looking back on the conquer cup women's qualifiers and this will be our shared perspectives i am hoping that I will be sharing my perspective on our journey so far now that we've hurdled over round one on our quest to qualify for our second consecutive Women's World Cup. I'm hoping that you guys in the comment section will join me at some point um, during the show and I could listen to you guys' opinion and maybe we could bounce off each other. Let's remind ourselves that this is a child-friendly audience. So if you are coming on air, please do keep it clean because you never know if someone is watching the show with there looks for one and obviously we don't want to be um bad influence also try to be respectful to each other when you do come on air as well um try to keep it clean i know you guys in the comment section are always well behaved especially when someone tries to be negative towards the girls um please do keep it up i'm not going to tell you guys how to deal with people in the comment section because i think you guys are doing a splendid job so far so let me see what you guys are saying in the comment section from the jump Mr. Malik Mills, my bro, how are you? Hope your evening is going well. Please do eat for both of us. I've yet to actually have my dinner. So my dinner is currently still in the microwave. When I'm finished on here, I'm going to um, be tucking into my dinner. So Mr. Mills, for the time being, please do go ahead and eat for both of us. Island Cart, you've been here over the last couple of days. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. Uh, big up to yourself. Good evening. What's on your table? Um, what's on your dinner table tonight? Must be something nice, right? Uh, Mr. Dre, Mr. Dre there. Um, good evening to yourself. Let me know, guys, from the jump. Let me know. Let's take it one game at a time. Or you could just let me know how you feel having heard it over the first round of the women's qualifiers. Mr. Louis Perez, are you on Instagram? Instagram by by any chance I did plug um, your clip from last night and I put it onto our Instagram so let me know if you're on Instagram and I will tag you into the post no worries if you're not um, but it'd be great if we could tag you in the post from last night um, big up yourself Louis Perez jr guys um, mr. Perez there he is from 
is from the Dominican Republic uh, and he's been sat with us over the last couple of days um, cheering for both his country, Dominican Republic and Jamaica as well. So let's be nice to Mr. Perez Jr. there and let's keep him good company. Uh, Mr. Wayne Evans, how are you? Thank you. It has been a good evening for me, um, to be honest. If you're a tired one, but it has been a good evening so far. Um, good evening to yourself. How are you guys doing? Let me know how your week has been so far, guys. It's officially midweek. Let me know how your week has been so far. So as I've said, tonight it is the Reggae Girls show, and we're talking all things Reggae Girls. We're actually looking back tonight. We're going to be looking back at the CONCACAF Women's Qualifiers. Um, and we're going to be sharing our opinions respectfully, obviously. Um, so I'll be bouncing off my co-hosts uh, when they're good and ready to join me and also from you guys in the comments section. But before we dive into anything, I think what we need to do is we need to look back on what's happened so far. Give ourselves a little gentle reminder of the other groups and how they've performed and look at the teams that will advance to the next round of the CONCACAF Women's Championship. Right from the jump, we've got Island Carty saying, I'm proud of the girls. They have come so far. I'm so happy for them. I know for sure they are going to back to back World Cup. I like the sound of that back to back World Cup. I think I might leave that comment there. But before I do that, I'm going to just tap down to Mr. Richard Stevens' comment. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reverse back to Island Cart's comment there. Mr. Richard Stevens says, Ready, ready. We regular girls, friends, fans or strap for takeoff talk <laughs> i'm up for joining the pilot seat you are always welcome to take us off the ground and give us a safe landing there mr richard stevens i notice when it comes to the reggae girls i fumble over my words i think i need to try and manage my excite excitement a little bit more um because the last, last couple of days have been just highly exciting for more reasons than, than one. And we're going to dive into all of that. We're going to weigh up the good. We're also going to add a bit of balance and also weigh up the not so good. Um, so I hope you guys will be enjoying the show. Let me bring back up Island Card's comment because I think that's a lovely comment right there. I'm going to leave that there for the time being. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to do one of my favorite things. And I'm actually going to go ahead and... Where's my manners? Let me go ahead and share the the link there in the comment section if you guys fancy joining me on live stream you are more than welcome to let me reiterate keep it kind keep it pleasant above all keep it respectful between myself any potential co-hosts or panelists that you see on screen and also to the guys in the comment section my only rule is no bad language literally um, it is so simple um no bad language whatsoever and also try to turn your camera on if you are coming on live stream so i I can see your lovely faces all right i think i've done enough talking it's been almost 10 minutes um okay so let's go ahead and hit the shared screen and i can go over and look at the results from the rest of the um countries because they matter as well don't they so as you can see they're in group a we have mexico mexico there on maximum points four matches played four wins there they have a goal difference of 34 so that's a team to keep an eye on isn't it if we scroll down and look at group b we see costa rica costa rica out on top costa rica on 12 points four matches four wins quite similar similar very similar to jamaica there if you look at costa rica four matches played four wins 22 goal difference, 12 points. We scroll down to Group C, the best group there is, and we've got Jamaica sitting at the top, sitting pretty at the top there. Four matches played, four wins. 22 as our goal difference, similar to Costa Rica there in Group B, and 12 points, maximum points secured. A massive, a huge big, um, big up to the guys in group c so dominican republic bermuda cayman islands and grenada as well you guys were quite a contest um don't think there is any matches there respectfully that i thought well this is a walk in the park given what happened with cayman islands i think to an extent we can say that you know 
that score line was was coming at some point uh, but nevertheless i think cayman islands um a building a foundation there a steady foundation so all the best of luck to cayman islands grenada bermuda and dominican republic as well definitely enjoyed um playing against you guys and hopefully we can um square off again sometime in the near future we go down and look at group d group d there we've got panama at the top panama sitting on 12 points so that's maximum points four matches played four wins they have a goal difference of 24 so they're pretty much the queens of their group aren't they if you look at all of the points accumulated there with the rest of their um competitors the closest one to them is el salvador as you can see goal difference of 12 there um and nine points in the bag we scroll down and we look at group e group E is Haiti. My word, look at Haiti's goal difference, guys. We talk about our goal difference, and rightly so. If we look at Group E, four matches played, four wins there for Haiti, 12 points, maximum points in the bag there for Haiti. And they have an applaudable goal difference of 44. Would not want to actually dive into some of their results. I'm sure it would probably just be absolutely gobsmacking. You could only cast your eyes at the bottom of the screen there. You see British Virgin Islands, um, goal difference of minus 43. So that pretty much summarized. Um, looks like there was a lot of drama and chaos in Group E. <laughs> if we're looking at solely the goal difference and if we scroll down and look at the bottom the final group but definitely never um leaving the worst group to last um they always say save the best to last so big up trinidad and tobago there um four matches played three wins one draw 10 points in the bag goal difference of 16 so if we do it from back to front we've got trinidad and tobago haiti Panama, Jamaica, Costa Rica, and Mexico all through to the next round. Let me go back and see what you guys are saying. It's a good thing that I decided to just pause my um screen there, pause my shared screen. Let me do a little quick big up to you guys in the comments section, especially the likes of Karumi and Mr. Dre Anyweather Sports. It's been really busy over the last couple of days and I've not managed to give you guys the traditional shout out. But please know that I have taken note of your comments and I appreciate the fact that you guys have been with me on my journey um, from the jump. So um, thank you guys so much for your warm love and support. Um, definitely, definitely taking note of you guys there in the comments section. And I'll stick a pin in it very briefly um, because it's time for me to actually bring on my guests. Um, you would have seen him here the last couple of days and I'm sure it's been a pleasure listening to him. He's been quite insightful, passionate, loving towards the girls and, and quite warm as well. Um, you know the reason boss if we're talking about perspective you have to go for the reason boss right. So it is none other than Mr Richard Stevens. How are you sir? Greetings and salutations once again, Crystal viewers and subscribers to Tellawa TV. Hit the like. You are warmly welcomed as we uh, pour over. It's only the start. There's going to be so much talk. I am in fine fettle. The reggae girl sent us off with a victory into the second stages. They've produced some terrific performances. Uh, by no means perfect. Plenty of room for improvement. But they have proved successful in navigating the first hurdle their journey of making back-to-back -back consecutive World Cups in Australia and New Zealand. A dominant 5-1 victory over the Dominican Republic plucky opponents as Luis Perez uh, so ably and succinctly put and humility was on show and I'm very humbled to be in your presence Crystal along with fellow Talawans. A terrific couple of days, a few days of back-to-back World Cup qualifications, and I'm in good mood, a great mood. Reggae girls, two games played, two wins, mission accomplished. The glass is half full and not half empty, but there is so much to pour over, and I'm in good company to pour over the beginnings of what will be hopefully a, a mouth-watering prospect of qualification to the World Cup but there are games to be played and much to pour over. Good, bad, and indifferent. Crystal. <laughs> Beautifully um, ended there. Indifferent, good, bad, and indifferent. Um, I like that. I like the way you rounded that one off. It's funny how we're both pretty much knackered, but for some reason, 
think I'm going to put it down to the, the, the Reggae Girls results. Some reads, they're pretty much, we're, we're feeding off their energy um, from their last tour results in this window and also in the in the February window as well. I can't speak for Richard, but I am absolutely knackered. But those results have given me a little bit of boost in terms of energy. That's the only way I'm actually able to come back on air and give you guys back to back live streams. Um, don't know about you, Richard, but how are you feeling energy wise? Well, it's a great point, Crystal, and it, it, it shouldn't be lost. The point shouldn't be lost. Um, some people have recognized that we are on the other side of the waters, thousands of miles away, but with our hearts in the right place, i.e. supporting the reggae girls in Jamaica. And uh, we are in England, so when it comes to kickoff times, it's late uh, into the um, wee hours of the morning. So we've had 11 o'clock, 11.30, 12 o'clock shows following uh, the fortunes of the reggae girls and then of course the post-match discussions which have taken us into the 2 3 a.m and beyond a.m so it's difficult for us it's difficult but it's a labor of love and we've been uh steadfastly supporting the reggae girls uh through the thick and thin and maybe in part that's why uh sub subscribers and viewers and fans such as yourself you're not only a journalist but you're a fan also and that is probably why with such a passion, you also uh, are care, caring and paying close attention to the finer, small margins and details. Because when it gets to the the real crux of the matter, which is competing against the very best that the CONCACAF has to offer, sometimes the small details may be the difference between success and failure. So a couple of points that you may be looking to bring about bring into the discussion and, and and possibly for the commenters to uh give their opinions on i think in reflection and upon reflection they're very important um admin behind the scenes as well as what the girls are doing on the pitch is very important so uh more power to your crystal and um it'd be very interesting to see how we delve into some of the issues um we hopefully get to to cover it's interesting that you've said that um, in terms of being, um, obviously, you've quite rightly put it, me being a journalist for The Voice newspaper. Let me tell you guys, The Voice newspaper are Britain's only black newspaper. I'm proud of that achievement, so I always have to say it whenever I'm able to squeeze that bit of fact in. And you're right in terms of me being a supporter and me sitting in the 12th man section. It's an odd place to be, especially with this reggae girls team because, you know, I've always said that I've covered games in the Premier League. I've done League Cups. I've done like European nights. I've done FA Cup finals, but nothing tops going to the World Cup. And obviously I was in France in 2019. And it's an odd position to be in because I have like this emotional connection with the team because they gave me the ultimate pride, which is the bragging rights of saying my country is at the World Cup. So that's probably the reason why I try to pay like extra um close attention to the team and like what's going on with the team and you know try to like just try to drum up positivity with the likes of yourself and um uh the guys in the comment section as well just because of that emotional connection there um with the team and no before people get started it's not because it's the women's team it's literally because they took us to of the world cup for 90s babies I can't speak for a lot of 90s babies, but I have no memory of 1998. I'm too young for that. So, But I do have memory of 2018. And that's something that we fill ourselves with great pride. Before I forget my manners, um, guys, I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to revert back to Mr. Everton Jackson because he's touched on something that we actually planned on speaking about um, tonight. So, guys, where you see Dre Anyweather Sports, please go ahead and type that in on YouTube and give it a subscribe. More importantly, go ahead and hit the like button on his latest video. If I scroll down and I look at Coach's desk, Mr. Coach's desk here, you are definitely familiar to his name and his um, face if you are tuned into um, all things Jamaica where sports is concerned. You can see how it's spelled there, Coach's desk, uh, with the hyphen, with the um, comma there. Go ahead and type his name into YouTube in the search bar and click like and subscribe subscribe more importantly to his channel and hit like on his latest video let me just go back up to where mr everton jackson said something um 
interesting comment here it's an interesting comment and we're going to dive into some of this in the next um couple of minutes so he says mr jackson says i am honestly worried about the next round jamaica does have the quality but making timely tactical adjustments during the games is going to be critical against better teams interesting um final line there uh mr jackson is probably under the impression a lot of people in the in the comment section including myself given what we saw on social media in relation to the bench a lot of you guys are probably under the impression that a certain drew spence would have made an appearance last night um uh to no fault of the gaffer um not sure where the mistake came from i don't think it came from the um press from the press officer neither could only put this one down to the social media team because they've made one or two mistakes. Um, so this could probably um, the, the the substitution there, the naming of Drew Spence on the on the bench, there probably cause a few uh, um, confusion. And I can understand why someone like Mr. Jackson is talking about tactical adjustments during the game um, because this is one name. Spence name was one name that people are looking to to say why is it the gaffer bringing in drew spence lo and behold we weren't to know that actually she's still not eligible to to play so we're going to touch on, on that later on in the show um but for the time being back over to yourself um mr richard stevens yes um there, there are a couple of things that we need to dive into and um <clears throat> explore and um just flag up because as I said, the fine margins sometimes can make the difference. And of course, if we want to uh, stop speculation and conjecture developing, sometimes uh, matters such as the Drew Spence situation, uh, if we can nip that in the bud, uh, check and double check sources um, before we get going, uh, things can run smoothly and we don't have uh, excess drama. We're talking about Tiffany Cameron, outstanding performance, really strong. No drama, Tiffany. <laughs> no drama, <laughs> Tiffany. Uh, the only drama she was producing was on the pitch. Yeah. And she played her part, but we don't Assist want the excess goals. drama. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Re really storming effort. And uh, uh, she was given instructions. Um, I've listened to a couple of interviews with, with Vin, uh, the coach, and he instructed her uh, from the get-go that she needed to play out wide and stay out wide as much as possible to provide the width to get those uh, incisive crosses and opportunities for the forwards such as Khadija Shaw uh, to um, hopefully have the reggae girls prosper in front of goals. And she really stuck to her task, showed her experience and her class, uh, and she delivered, uh, particularly in the second half and I thought she, she put in a really strong performance uh electrifying at, at times uh energetic and uh she fully deserved to be on the winning side as did all the reggae girls I thought they all put in a shift and um of course there's room for improvement of course there is and uh the gap between uh ourselves and the likes of America Canada uh, and Mexico to a large degree will be interesting to see how close that gap is um, come the qualifiers and then afterwards as well, because the CONCACAF is truly blessed to have some of the finest uh, female teams in the world. So it would be very interesting. i tell you what, Crystal, I, I was having a look at the comment section. Um, I think last time you said that during one of the broadcasts, you had over 700 comments. I mean, that's, that's it was, outstanding. It was insane. Outstanding. Um, <laughs> you know, the commenters, they really make the show because I'll watch reruns. Um, and I don't get the time to watch all of the comments coming in. They're I try amazing. To see as much as possible. Absolutely. And they make the show as well. They're a big part of the show. And it's really interesting. There was a mixed um, bag regarding the performance of the reggae girls. Um, and my mind's um, starting to reflect on standards and expectations as mm -hmm. um, we get closer to the World Cup. One, expectations in terms of how good the reggae girls are. Um, and, and is there a level? Is there a is there a glass ceiling? Um, I get the feeling that people think a lot of them, but maybe they need some more ingredients, uh, whether it be coaching, uh, whether it be tactics, who knows? But uh, get the sense that some people uh, feel that they can achieve even more. And that would be very interesting because it was a solid performance yesterday. And um, to have four games played, four victories, uh, pretty conclusive each one of them um 
very interesting. But there's a lot of love for the reggae girls and a lot of tons. respect. That's the yes. big tons. That's tons the good of, thing. You can't, you can't even thing. count it. You cannot count the amount of love. And I'm glad that they've got love because I've always said, you know, that it's difficult to nail down who the, the, the poster girl is in this team because there's several different poster girls. It's not just one. It's not the obvious. I think a lot of people, when they think of... um women's football where the, the, the women's team is con women's football where the women's football where Jamaica is concerned. I think they just assume that it's one clear cut poster girl, but it's not like because because they hold themselves in such highest esteem and they're lovable and they're approachable, um fans have warmed to them. So there's a number of players there that are absolute fan favorites that you probably if you're not if you're not used to um Jamaican women's football, you probably just go with the obvious. Um and you will caught me will be caught by a pleasant surprise um i'm just going to stick a pin in it before i bring on my next guest and i'm going to revert back to something that you said in terms of nipping things in the bud um so mr malik mills wh where's my plate where's my plate i'm hungry <laughs> as well i just got my chinese food waiting by the way to get a, to go back home my, my dad he gets some chipotle from the you know the, the chipotle <laughs> what did you order what some like chow mein, all chicken, teriyaki chicken. Got the, I got Malik, the whole, guess, I got guess the what? Whole piece. Guess what, Malik? Uh, what? That's what, what that's that's what I ordered as well. What chow mein? Yes. <laughs> oh, Snap. <dang>. Snap. <laughs> I'll take a picture just to prove to you that that's exactly what I ordered. So great minds think alike. We we think alike when it comes to the women's team and and food. So we have more than one thing in common. And Crystal, but I, I want to say something. You know, I didn't know you wasn't you know old enough to not see the um the ninety eight World Cup. I thought she was old enough. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was at least what twenty seven thirty. Really. <laughs> Easy now, easy now, e e easy now, man. No, easy no. now. No need to throw the numbers out there now. No need to throw the numbers out there, my man. You, you're on good but you, ground but you so know, far, my homie. But 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 listen, look. But you know this, right? Most of the most women of the that women look very beautiful are 27 and 30. You know. <laughs> You know what? You've been around. You've been around, Mr. Stevens, for too long. You're becoming very um, politician-like. I like the way you, you. I like the way you rope yourself back in. I can't even be mad at you. But no, uh, you're not far off. Um, so you're not far um, off with my age there. But no, I, I'll be lying if I said I remember '98. I have to do my reading for that. Yeah, Actually, I know. I know when, book. when '98 came around. I was only one year old. I was only one year old. <laughs> so you don't stand a chance of remembering yeah. um, 98 there. I'm just going to revert back to what Mr. Mr. Stevens was saying in terms of nipping certain things in the bud. Um, the reason why I chose to ask um, Mr. Blaine the gaffer about uh, Drew Spence there, asking him, you know, what was his plan for... Um, his start at 11 and alluding to the fact that Drew was on the bench. I think he was probably maybe confused as to why I'm asking him that because I don't think he realized that for the media and the 12th man and people who are active on social media, we could see based on what the um, JFF social media account put out that Drew Spence was obviously placed on the bench. So there was some element of confusion there. And I think it's something that he needed to address. And I'm glad he addressed it because before he addressed that question, many people wanted to put his head on the on the chopping board and, and get to work because they were probably under the impression that it's down to favoritism or I saw a, lot, a few people in the comments section um, comparing Mr. Vin Blaine there to Mr. Tapper Whitmore. And unless you're talking about the skills of Mr. Tapper Whitmore, when you're talking about the managerial um, abilities, that's not exactly the, the highest praise to um to be given to you. So it was interesting that people were comparing um Mr. Blaine there to Mr. Whitmore, and they were doing it particularly with the substitution around uh Drew Spence. What do you make of Mr. Blaine's response there um to the question uh, in terms of what it says with regards to dare I say internal communication? Myself um, or, or Malik? Malik? Any one of you. Go ahead, Malik. I don't know, so. What I was saying, well, like you said last night, Christy, the, the media team 
me used to do so if you could, if it's just like a little echo or something or a noise I'm, I'm beside a truck if, if you can see the truck right there so, it's okay um like you were saying last night the media team needed the social media team need to do a better job and know their job and know what they're doing because if they are doing all this you know stuff and confusing us and then when we go ask the, the, the gaffer or the coach and he looking at us like, what is these people talking about? I don't know nothing <laughs> about it. He like, he like, is they living in another dimension or, you know, we looking crazy. So they need to do a better job of putting the team lineup and people on the bench 100% better than what they are doing. Because when, like I said, when they do that, when they mess up like that, it's confusing me Mr. Richards, you, Mikey, coaches, that's confusing everybody. I think it's well a very said. good point. It's a very it's a very good point. I remember <clears throat> I remember Crystal and Malik, viewers and subscribers. I had a conversation, I think it was with Coach Minzy on Coach's desk. Uh and um I grew up over the uh, growing up over the years and decades, um, really admiring Jamaican athletes, particularly those uh, in the track and field. Uh, arena and uh, watching the outstanding performances against the best in the world and I've always you know had so much admiration but one of the interesting things that came out of our discussions was uh, an appreciation and realization that um, the Jamaican Amateur Athletics Association for example rely a lot uh, to a large degree on uh, the input and support uh, and time and energy of volunteers who do a lot, um, particularly at grassroots level, as well as um, at championship levels to ensure that uh, championships run smoothly and that the athletes have the uh, appropriate uh, environment, professional environment, <laughs> excuse me, environment to thrive as much as they do. And the matter of organizational abilities um, has come to uh, the fore, as well as marketing. But in terms of administration, uh, maybe Jamaica uh, has, in general, uh, had a bit of a lassadaisical approach when it comes to administration. So this is something that I really wanted to find out and, and to find out from yourself, Crystal, and maybe the viewers and subscribers could um, pipe in with their experiences. Uh, even Malik as well could um, um, give a, a little perspective as to, to the importance of um, administration because it's not just the... The, the women out on the field, they're performing, but you need to have the right structures in place, social media-wise, PR-wise, to ensure that everything is running as smoothly and professionally as possible. So there's a, a look, the right look, the good look, um, and, and, and that the, the players and the coach can feel comfortable and not embarrassed um, at things um, coming out of the woodwork. Uh, Vin was in, interviewed uh in a couple of um uh positions um officially through the press conference and then i saw him subsequently um being interviewed on this or that tv and um he made mention of the drew spence situation and it it came across as a tad embarrassing he had to be diplomatic about it but um it, it's not necessarily a, a a good look because that's where the speculation the conjecture exactly. uh, can come in and the isms and schisms the bad blood why isn't this player being selected what what's going on what gives something smells something's not quite right and uh you know during the game yesterday uh, against the Dominican Republic who had some pretty dynamic midfield players we saw that there was a bit of a <clears throat> chasm or open space in the center of midfield at times Molo Swetman was uh trying her best to 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 um bridge the gap as it were but found herself moving outside of the, the, the central position, which um, apparently Vin wanted her to to stay settled in. But in terms of having additional support, wasn't quite there. And Marlow is not the most mobile of midfielders, very eloquent and experienced a player. But if you wanted to have a change, for example, or to bring in someone in addition, Drew Spence was there. And I could hear the word Drew Spence. I was watching and thinking, OK, Drew Spence could be an option. Five substitutes made. No appearance of Drew Spence, but she's on the bench. She's one of the subs. Lo and behold, subsequently, we find that it was all about camaraderie. That's the good thing, the camaraderie. Drew was on the bench, not in kit 
um, prepared to play and ready to play because she clearly wasn't, but clear only in the <laughs> eyes of Vin and her fellow teammates. But to the watching fans, we were none the wiser. So, Crystal, it's a really interesting point. So back to administrations and dotting the I's, crossing the T's. Really, really important. Um, so, yeah, I'd be fascinated to see what you've got to say. Just going to take a sip of water because um, the old um, hay fever still got me and I, a bit hoarse from arms um, sharing in the, the goals as they reined in all five of them. Go, go for but, it. Before, go on there, Malik. Oh, but before Crystal answer, I wanted to, I wanted to touch on that before I forget my train of thought. Like what Richard said, like, okay, like I'm going to use American football, like for instance, right? So a lot of teams say they want a football guy running their, like, general manager and, and let's say, um, other, all, other positions in the front mm -hmm. office. So that those guys can know the game of football, know what they're doing, know what they need in position to be successful and to get the team to be at a higher and at a higher level and execute the way they want them to execute. Because if you're just having a bunch of people who say they know what they're doing, they could be rocket scientists, right? But they don't know nothing about the game of soccer or even about the public relations part, but they walk as scientists. They, they would still do bad and make you look bad because you put them in a position and all this time, they knew nothing of what they was doing. So therefore, people, and let me say the JFF or whoever, whatever you're doing, you need to know who you have winning these positions before you make them answer, I mean, before you make them do anything. And I want to answer one more thing. I want to say something about what Brain Jane said. Brain Jane, yeah, I do love the city of Detroit. The city of Detroit is my second favorite city, second to Fort Moore and Washington, D.C. Well, actually, <laughs> number one to Washington, D.C. where I'm from, but yeah. But I'm going to come back on later when I get okay, back in the right. house. Safe, okay. safe travel. Okay. Before I chime in to what's been said so far, guys, I'm going to bring on another um, guest. You guys would have seen him around here, um, completely balling all over the place, um, shooting, shots, taking long, long range efforts there. You can't stop him once he's in the mood for shooting. You would have seen him if you do not know him or isn't familiar with his name. It is Mr. Mikey Balin. How are you, sir? I am good. Uh, good morning to you. No, it's still good. Uh, good night. Uh... Approaching. Approaching, yes. About 12 minutes good from, from a brand new day. Good morning to, uh, good afternoon to everybody else. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm good. I'm tired, but I'm telling you, the last, the fact that we're now, you know, advanced over the first hurdle, kick down round one, um, I'm feeling good. Tired, but happy. I literally can't stop smiling in spite of the, you know, the little not so good um moments there away from the team and the gaffer the gaffer and the um press officer as well um because obviously a few things happened in this window and a lot of people thought that you know it's it's down to the press officer or it's down to the to the to the gaffer but you know fortunately for them they literally have nothing to do with it it's just the incompetence is coming from somewhere else well let me tell you i have a little small business that i run and I tell my employees, the company is good as the worst person. Hmm. Hmm. So if you have five persons work doing 100% and one person doing 5%, your company is 5%. So if JFF want to do well, they have to make sure the, first, the worst person is doing well. So the first person is 90% then. Hmm. But if the worst person, a business is only as good as the worst person. No, no matter what business you're running at, at that business place. So if you have a nasty person answering your phones, <laughs> your business is going to make money. Simple. You know what I mean? True. So that's, that's all true. I got to say the J, for the JFF. You know, um, today I'm a very happy mood because, you know, we'll, we'll put the one step forward another step backwards and that is good that's good for jamaica and i was surprised 
wasn't a sellout state, uh, sellout Sabina Park, but there was quite a few fans. Yes, I'm also school students as well. Right, I'm which, also which very happy that the ladies went over and took you know selfies and signed autographs and all yes. that stuff with the people. Yes. Right, and they're all smiles and everything. Everybody wanted to talk to someone, and um, you know that is good, mm -hmm. and that they all that's promoting the game. I'm sure if Jamaica have a warm up game in the future, and it's at the stadium, they're going to be a big sh showing because Jamaicans are wagoners, <laughs> and they want to be in a winning wagon. You understand? Yeah, yeah, you understand me? Yeah. Okay, so that's what that's what I think, you know. What do you make of um Mr. Blaine's comment there um with regards to the, the, the five substitution? What do you think that tells you about him, his who he is as a person and how he wants to be viewed more importantly by the by the fans? Five substitution he made? I didn't what did he say about it? I don't know. <laughs> you mean about me? What yeah, I, yeah, yeah. What do you make what do you think he makes of what do you think of the fact I that think he, you know what it is? I think he needs to, I think because I was on the next thing this t earlier today and I was telling them that um, when Mr. Blaine talk about the person that talk about the five substitution, they talk, he's talking about me. <laughs> and what I did not, what he does not know, just like he doesn't know that they put uh, Spencer as the captain and they yes. have Spence on the, on, uh, on the squad. I did not know that he made five changes because it's the stream I'm watching did not highlight the two extra changes. So when he when he understands that, then he will understand where I'm coming from, you see? And this is what mix-up is all the time because people are killed. I was going to kill him for not playing Spence. But now that he made it clear on an interview that she is not, she don't have paperwork, well, she's not ready. Her paperwork is not ready, so she can't play. Then everything is okay. You know what I make of um, the fact that he touched on the the, the five substitution because I was told again today that he brought it up on, on another um, interview. That tells me that he's one giving a listening ear, yeah. and two he he wants there to be transparency between himself and the fan base. Like if someone is thinking something that's not accurate, he's like, no, I'm gonna keep beating the drum until we're, we're all on the same page here. But I I, I could be wrong. No, you know, uh, I think Mr. Blaine is a straight shooter. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. He's like me. Yeah. I, I think if he's wrong, he's going to say he's wrong. Yeah, yeah. He's actually admitted um, maybe one or twice when he's gotten a few things wrong that, you know, I'm sorry, basically. I've heard him uh, apologize already. I, he apologized for the grenade again. A grenade? What, what happened in the grenade game? What no, because he said he took them, he took it, took them for granted. And uh, all the yes, girls were yeah, shooting from the yeah, outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah and he took yeah, the blame he's for it. his hand up a few times. Right? So mm -hmm. when he's when they have a coach that is willing to say, listen, it's not the not the team's fault, it's my fault. Then you said, This man is open. This man is willing to take the blame. The team won, and he still took the blame for not scoring 12 goals. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was saying on the other stream that listen. A lot of you here knocking Vin Blaine and knocking Vin Blaine, but from day one, from the first Bermuda game to the DR game, every game the girls played, they improved. So, and when if he has two weeks with the girls or a week or two weeks uh, where the girls are together in a camp, it makes a lot of difference because, like I heard Trudy in an interview said um, that you know she and Bunny is not really clicking together because she passed the full run and Bunny's looking for the ball on her feet. That's not exactly her words, but that's what she meant. That's why sometimes she passing the ball, Bunny's looking at her, she's looking at Bunny because the ball is going one way and Bunny going the other way. When you train together daily, you know that Bunny's going to make this run without even looking. So you pass the ball there and Bunny's going to pick it up. So, you know, they need to, they need to practice together. And it's very difficult as professionals because they all play for clubs. Hopefully, in the June window, there will be all the club teams that finish all their games and they could have a week or you know a couple of days together to strengthen the team. Because mm -hmm. Mexico have an advantage. Yeah. I think all the yeah. Mexicans play in Mexico. All the Mexicans play a Mexican team, so they're all in Mexico, basically. 
the Americans are disadvantaged and the Kenyans, I'm sure they all over the world, just mm-hmm. like the Americans and the Jamaicans are all over the world. Cause I think the only two Jamaicans on the team that, that lives in Jamaica, that's, that lives in Jamaica is Bunny and not, not, not Bunny. I mean, um, Judy Carter. Shoshana. And, eh? Shoshana. Shoshana and Judy Carter. Maybe they're the only two. Maybe. Cause you know, uh, I put, because, um, Jody goes to college. She'd be mm-hmm. home maybe in 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 June for, uh, or from college. So, so they you know that's the advantage when you have a lot of homegrown players on your team where you can get a quick camp on a weekend when they when they're off from playing for their clubs. It's interesting. Yeah. I want to ask you um a question, and I don't know, Mr. Richard Stevens. I'm sure you caught um what Mr. Ballin was saying. I don't know if you want to chime in, uh, before I move on to my. Next question for my wonderful panelists and also you guys in the comment section. Before I forget my manners, big up to all the guys in the comment section. Um, thank you for tuning in. And also big up to my lovely panelists as well, Mr. Richard Stevens, Mr. Mikey Ballin, and also Mr. Malik Mills. Guys, I don't even know. This This team was literally f- um, found by, I can't say by accident because everything happens for a reason. But let me tell you how it was. It was quite simple. Here is what I did. Um, so I'm going to do it again. I did something. I did this. I just dropped the link to the live stream in the comment section and they came on. So I'm encouraging you guys in the comment section to come on um, and join us at any at any period during the live stream. Only thing I ask for, my only rule is to keep it clean, be respectful to my um, panelists and also to the guys in the comments section. And if you are going to be critiquing the team, be it the men's team or the women's team, then please do so respectfully. Back over to you guys. You well, say you uh, question. I was going to ask a question. I was just thinking if um, if um, Mr. Richard Stevens there had anything else to um, to, to add to what we've said so far. Well, I must say there was something refreshing uh, and um, we'll find out how contentious or not the situation is regarding Vin because it's ironic. It's irony. It's ironic or ironical uh, irony of ironies that uh, from having a coach for the national team, certainly on the men's side, uh, who wasn't exactly um, on first name terms with the media and um, coming out and being um, open and communicative, suddenly, like the old British buses, London buses, we've got two of them. Back-to-back, Paul Hall, uh, now, I believe, confirmed as the Jamaican national men's manager. Uh, and uh, we've also got uh, Vin, who is very communicative and reflective because uh, he has been quick to acknowledge uh, his shortcomings. He's also said and expressed that he has no problems with uh, fellow footballers, uh, footballing professionals, or fans berating him, uh, <laughs> uh, suggesting that he's he's not fit for the job, uh, and um, um, criticizing his tactical or substitution uh, decisions. He welcomes that because that's part and parcel of the challenges of being a manager. I think that's so refreshing, so mature, and um, he certainly um, won me over in terms of his ability uh, to communicate with the press and the fans. Of course, it's going to be another matter as to how well he hones the team and brings them up to the standard where they can go toe-to-toe genuinely in terms of ball possession and retention uh, and, and tactical skills when they come up against the Americans, uh, Mexicans and uh, Canadians. Of course, we've got to pay due respect to Panama. Congratulations. To all of those who have also qualified uh, for the next round, uh, uh, Costa Rica, uh, uh, Haiti uh, looks a very handy team. I saw them perform recently uh, yesterday, and very, very, very convincing. And Trinidad and Tobago, congratulations to all who have made the final round. Mike, it's good to see you. And um, I know that Crystal said that um, she welcomes people jumping on board um, as long as they um, are mindful of their pews and cues and 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 behave themselves. Um, I hope you're ready to continue setting a fine example, which you do for the most part. For the most part, because you know, say as J- as as Jay Russ has noted, uh, some people could perceive a, a war going on in downtown Talawa TV, and we don't want that going on. Am I right? Guess what the difference is here? We have no Russians or Ukrainian here as our Jamaicans. <laughs> so, if, is that is it peaceful? It's a peaceful thing. 
it's a peaceful war all right they they go yeah. at it at now and again guys and you know they are the elder to myself so i have to just sit back and let them have their scrap i don't interfere i don't even ring the bell i don't count i don't do nothing i just leave them to it crystal like i said to you earlier today that mr blaine mentioned me again well didn't mention me but brought the substitution again yeah <laughs> you know and i tell you i feel i feel some lashes on my back so he's beating me real bad <laughs> Are you? Are you? But it's are all you, fun, you know. I like it. I, I, I hope I, that I don't mean you're gonna change your tune or him. or try to eh? hold back. <laughs> Jay Ross, no easy. No, Jay Ross said we want Tyson and Holy. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's my column and Sugar Ray <laughs> Leonard. The body I'm snatcher. Jamaican, so I mean, I want a Tyson and Holy Field. My column, Jamaican. The Guys, I'm gonna stick up in it. Eh? I'm going to um reintroduce someone you have seen him on my show before um he's a little bit shy though i don't know if it's just me um i thought there was a little bit of love there but clearly not because he tends to be a little bit shy when it comes to coming on my program but tonight he's at a change of heart and he's going to um bless us with his insights you would have seen him in the comment section on plenty occasion um it's none other than mr coach karumi how are you sir i'm okay coach. Evelyn, good evening. Mitch and Richard, sweet mouth, Johnny Cake. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not shy, you know. It just sometimes I like typing. You understand? I like understood. <laughs> you like the fingers doing the walking. Yeah. <laughs> I listen, I listen. I listen. I've been listening, I've been listening, I've been listening. And one of the things them that stand out for me personally, and I don't know if it's a is that issue with the football, but we play too slow. I was going to bring that up. Mm. I was going to, you know, you know what? I was going to say that that we play too slow because we have slow midfielders. <sighs> and and I think what's going to happen when you play against a team like Canada and the, I think we are playing to the level of our competition, maybe. No, okay. but no, but when I all right, I was explaining. To someone today, if you put if you put that damn wreck team, like if you if you put the Jamaican over to the damn wreck team and said that coach, coach that team. That is what I'm talking about. They 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 you see you see balance, you see movement, you see coordination, you see synergy, right? And you, you take our team, you see the individual ability to stand out more, but you don't see the collective. The, that is what I'm saying. When you look at the 80 team, you see collective. Yes. See, I'm not saying we're going to win, you know, but you see, you see, what, watching watching the pattern is like you can say, Talawa, they're going to score, you know, I look like it's going to score because you see the pattern heading mm. to something. Mm. Like you're writing a paragraph and you're coming to the conclude and you're reading and you yeah. build up, you build up and you build up and you see what is happening. We we are doing the reverse like with the mail. We are hoping that it happened. Is it different? We are hoping that we get something because when Bonnie shall get it, we expect that she can bulldoze our way through. But it, that not going to happen. When you go to the next round and people study you and assess you and plan for you. Mm. You, you 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 touched on something um and i was gonna bring it up with the guys later on in the show but since you've touched it, it makes sense to just forge them together do you think because i noticed that the way we approach the game against cayman islands and dominican republic in terms of how we started off particularly at dominican republic was much more crisper and sharper compared to bermuda and um grenada and i can only at that point put it down to the preparation because unlike back in february for this camp this window we arrived on the island in the nick of time girls i'm, I'm guessing they were able to remove all jet jet lag manage to stretch their legs a bit get the right number of training sessions going get the ball knocking across the field of play within their training session and i think you could see that by the time they um touch touch down in in grenada and got the ball um knocking across the field i don't think it's just a case of saying that um Cayman Islands were the poorer outfit because one thing about Cayman Islands like our our other opponents they are resilient 
So they're always going to like take their chances as at us. It's just for us, we are superior. Um, but they didn't lay down and just allow Jamaica to to have their way. But I think the key thing in this window so far for me has been preparation. I <laughs> sorry. No, I give I think Vin will speed them up a bit. The problem here is you know, we have problems at the wing backs. I, in the defense on a whole, we wanna, you know, to me, there's only one there there the, the one of the, the mid the defenders are real is I think it's gonna be there when we get to the next round. I think we're gonna change out three of them. Because they move too slow and they they yeah, the pass the pass it have to have to be crisper. But down to the level we were playing. Because remember, you know, we went to the World Cup, you know, before we went to the World Cup, we were playing this way, you know, but when we went to the World Cup, we sped up because the teams are playing faster. You remember that? Tempo, you have to match the, the tempo. tempo. Yeah. So I think also, yeah, true. when we go to Mexico, I think we're going to be playing faster. Mm. Because the other team's going to be coming at us. I mean, you know, the only other team I think will play slow is Trinidad because the Caribbean teams tend to play slow except Haiti. They're the only Caribbean team that move fast, I think. I'm I'm new to this women football, you know. So Miss Talawa have to educate me, you know. So <laughs> respect to in this present pool of play that we have, how many of these players were part of that previous squad? I will what, have to go through a list I, there for a, you. What, a good portion of them. What, what what I can say, adding to what Mr. Um, Ballin has said is the core players. So the, the good thing for us is the core players are still there. That's why core, I, I, I went and do my research, and when I mean that we are playing slow, mm -hmm. I want to be define it in us. Is the fact that we are searching, we are searching to make pass. With a core of player, we should not be searching to make passes. That is my concern. You understand? Yeah. It's an interesting one. I think, obviously, I'm not a coach, but you are. So maybe you could, like, guide me on this. Because the way I'm looking at it is they need to tap into that muscle memory. And I say that they need to tap into that muscle memory because, obviously, football came to a halt to no fault of their own because of the pandemic, global pandemic had a knock-on effect on our women's team coming together and, you know, reconnecting that synergy and that um, cohesion there. So I think... You know, in spite of the fact that they, the core players are still together, they still need to regain their muscle memory. They still need to come together in a timely manner in a camp so that they can familiarize themselves with who they are and their movements. Jody Brown and and and, and Bunny, they know each other like the back of their hand. But even in the game um, last night, was it last night? Yeah, last night. Even in last night, they came together on the odd occasion, literally just bucking up into each other. So I think we need to put more camps in the pipeline so the girls like familiarize themselves with each other because you know i always go back and say the reason why at club level the reason why every club have pre-season before the start of their seasonal campaign a new campaign is because they need to go back and look at that synergy and that cohesion doesn't matter if no new players come into the squad the fact that they've been away from each other sometimes it's just two weeks they still need to like remind themselves of getting into their rhythm and, and um getting into their stride what you say you don't know about coaching i don't <laughs> well, you're, you're he's a sports sport. reporter <laughs> they, 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 I I I like what I see in terms of I see players that can play. You understand? But in the middle of the park, I am a concern. I mm. I I am the type of person I like to see somebody like to kick people. I don't see I don't I, I don't see anybody in the middle of the park that kick people. Not physically kicking you in, but I mean be aggressive. You know what? The first, you guys that are amazing. The, that person was on the sideline dressed in the street clothes. Oh. You're amazing. You're amazing. The reason I'm saying you're amazing is because before I went to my bed last night, that's what I was thinking. I was like, we have we have a we have a midfield that is Rolls Royce esque, like you know, they're elegant players, but I want that pit bull in the middle of the part that's just gonna step on a few toes and bite a couple of ankles. Yeah, we we, that, we that we pit bull was on the bench in street clothes. <laughs> who, who was I? You have to Juice true, Spence. True, true. Yeah, but in in all in all fairness, she, in terms of documentation and so forth, 
you, you cannot be included because she's not. I know, but I'm saying because of foolishness with the JFF, she played for Jamaica last year when they played Costa Rica and Nigeria. About that's about eight nine months ago, and you can't take care of somebody's passport in eight nine months. That is terrible. Oh no, but I mean that aside, if she got injured, who else we have? No, well, I'm sure I, I'm sure that in the next window. Jade Bailey was I was saying to Crystal, remember Jade, Jade Bailey. Sorry to cut you off there, uh, Mr. Ballin. Remember, Jade Bailey is going to be coming into the fold as well for yes. the next camp, which should be in June. Someone in the comment section asks, when are we kicking off in Mexico? That's scheduled for July. So uh, the gaffer did say that he's looking to um, get a camp in june and interestingly he he wants us to he wants to find opponents that will match up to the level of opponents that we will get um in the in the tournament come come july also do you remember i was saying yesterday guys that i think that sweatman was moving a bit too slow and the game in mexico is going to leave her because um she needs to speed up a little bit she needs to get you know she's you know, because I think when they go to Mexico, the, the game is going to be fast. If they play Haiti, they're going to just run, you know, run, run, run her ragged. Thing with, with Marlo is this is why she's going to need, if that's the case, she's going to need added protection because she's not a fast, she's not a pacey midfielder. Exactly. You know, so it's just like you're asking her to do something that's out of outside of who she is as a player. So she, she needs that added layer of protection. I mean, come on, we're looking at Marlo and we're thinking, on, on two occasions, she did literally the same thing. The game against Cayman Island, pinpoint pass to Khadija, found the assist. Again, yeah. last night we saw her from a direct free, um, free kick. Pinpoint, pinpoint pass into the into the box, fell to the feet of Khadija. Unfortunately, um, Dominican Republic came, tried to scrap it. Tiffany Cameron latched onto it, passed it back to um, Bunny. Bunny put it into the back of the net. So yeah. she has clear vision, but she's going to need someone there to, to protect her because she's not a rough player. Right. And I heard an interview, I heard an interview um, with... Uh, Marlo, who uh, expressed that her ideal position, her preferred position, is um, playing the the number six role, uh, which is uh, um, you know uh, trying to help the the defence. Uh, so having additional support, I agree with you, uh, Crystal, would be useful for someone such as herself. Um, and you don't want to be uh, want her to be playing a role that is not um, ideal for her. But um, it is very interesting. Kyla McCoy, I wanted to add as well, who I've only came into um, familiarity with um, during this campaign, and she acquitted herself very well in terms of being a box-to-box, -box, um, being effective in terms of tackling um, Coach Karumi. Uh, Kyla McCoy plays for Glasgow that, Rangers, yes. and she was very good at um, scrapping, uh, tackling, um, um, shielding the ball, um, courting fouls, um, as well as keeping it simple. Asha style, keeping it simple, um, uh, keeping the game ticking over. Um, Casimiro style, uh, and uh, <laughs> of course Real Madrid and and Brazil, Viva de Sela style. Uh, so very, very very interesting, very interesting observations there, um, Coach Karumi. Uh, it's really good having you on, Coach Karumi. Do you have anything more to add in terms of uh, well, how familiar are you, Coach, when it comes to the whole idea of of having a team um, of talented players? But the coach, can you just explain the impact and the role and importance of a coach in bringing out the proverbial flavour of any given team? I heard someone uh, in the comment section uh, yesterday suggesting that if Jamaica had the uh, Dominican Republic's manager, I think he's a Spanish gentleman, but if he yes. was on board, it would bring a additional flavour and it would bring a, a, a pattern of play. Can you just express um, the, the importance of a coach um, in terms of bringing the full flavour um, to an a, a international or a club team, or international team as we're talking about the reggae girls, Coach Karun. I'm a very, <laughs> I might touch some con here. But... Yeah, I'm just sure that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> um... You get talked about by the coach next week. <laughs> um, it's very good that me at least in name mention it. Right? Yes. <laughs> the, the beauty about it, you know, as a coach, you have your identity of what you want to play and the system that you want to put forward to a team. Before, maybe when you reach the group of players that you have and you see them in your training session, maybe for a, a week or two, you start 
if you're not so much having the egos and so forth, that is a guess what I want to just play. Um, three four three, press high up the field. But when you realize that the type of players that you have, that approach and that system might can fit the players then that you have. You might just have to adjust to what you have in front of you. So in respect to the players then that we have, we have good talent. We have good individual talent with speed, right? So for the coach, he have to identify Yes, I want to play possession-based football, but at the same time, you don't want to kill the speed of the team also. So he have to understand that he have to get that balance, right? The next thing, there are everybody in the last few years are getting this in this mindset. So guess what? If you're not playing positional-based football on the ground, you are not playing football anymore. So everybody wants to play the pep football, the pep ball. So we have to be very careful because football is designed in many different ways. You can play it from back to front and score, like how the first goal scored in the game yesterday, from Spence to Shaw, Shaw head down to Carter. So three pass, one, two, three. So football playing many different ways. So the coach have to identify from early. If him can play this way with this type of player, or him have to adjust to suit what him have. So... For me personally, the matter they approach, but I'm concerned with that. We need to move the ball quicker. We need to do things quicker. We need to react quicker. And as we when I said Talawa, we need more camp, but we have about two months, three months, we can the next round start in July. Mm -hmm. So we have to hit the ground running from now. Maybe we need to get one more game or two games to get them to a level after we find the draw. Cause they're supposed to be a draw in the two um two group of four. And it's expected can... on the on the 18th next week tuesday on the 18th so from there we can decide how we're gonna get the games and so forth but my cry that's why why i come on is for private sector to need to come on board you understand there are private sectors on board, but we need more money make the mirror run you understand the girls them need them we, we, we it's all it's all coincidental we are in two world cup qualification the gentleman them um disappoint us, but we can correct th that disappointment with the female because if you look at what is happening with the the, 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 the female, is it going in a similar pattern in the thing them that is happening, and it kind of making me feel away because even the situation with Joe Spence, if this is happening, that is happening, where is the consistency? So, and then when you look back at what happened with the, the male team, it was the same thing. So we're heading down in that pattern and we need to stop it before it reached there. Because if you're going into a tournament or going into anything and you're starting out with negativity, you end up with negativity, you know? Yep. So irrespective of everything, as you said before, I never know that it was so long. I went and looked and I saw her name and I said, but so how she play? So I realized that you can play. In in in, in 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 practice game yes. without, but me I say you get that period. So even from those game, you don't realize that this person of quality that we need to get her documentation like no. So we need to get the house in order because our house it seems like it's everybody else. Everybody know what is our business and we don't know what is happening in other people's business. You so, know, <laughs> coach. You know, yes. JFF, You know, JFF sound like to me. You know, some people just like collect and don't pay. <clears throat> yeah, the collecting business, but them the pay out. Yeah, but the, it, it because if, it, if Jeff was paying out, them should have somebody in the passport office or the Jamaica customs office, yeah, whatever yeah, department. Yeah. That when them have a person, them just go to that person, and there's like a bang, 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 everything done. You understand me? And it is it, it is true because I'm it, I'm I'm we have. I don't want to make the same mistake because these young, young, these young ladies deserve all the support they need. I they can are... guarantee you, if Canada or the US find a person in Italy, that is captive of Canada or the US, today, before the end of the month, they have their Canada or US passport. Is there something? Is there something fundamentally? awry when it comes to Jamaica and business um, stroke administration um, 
Is it something that is almost taken as secondary, not so important? It's a kind of kickback, everything is blessed, everything's cool, whatever will, will be, will be. Or or is that doing doing um, Jamaican administrative uh, individuals and organizations a total disservice? Um, by the way, can I say salutations to Brain Drain uh, and Pagan 180? Uh, keep watching. Have you hit the like and share subscribe button? Have you? Have you now? Hit that like, share, and subscribe. The choice is your invitations. Coach Karumi, the JAA. I heard about the Jamaican Amateur Athletics Association being arguably the best um, when it comes to organization in Jamaica. But when you're looking at um, Cricket West Indies and you're looking at the JFF, which I've heard so much about since the last Gold Cup campaign, administration seems to be something that's either taken lightly or not taken seriously enough but these are the fine margins as you as, as as we've already acknowledged it would be great if the reggae girls have the support off the field as well as on the field because these are the margins the fine manage margins the little details that can make the big differences drew spence registered apparently as a substitute when in fact she was nowhere near being a substitute these are simple things, but so important. Is this a Jamaican trait, um, or or is this is this something that can be actively changed? Is it something that is to be aspired to? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna dot the eyes. I'm gonna cross the t's. I'm gonna be the best that I can be because it matters. It's a sense of personal pride because as day follows day, I can imagine the Americans and Canadians would be taking these kind of responsibilities responsibilities extremely seriously. And Coach Karumi, I'm sure you're old enough as well as yourself, Mikey Balance. Do you remember 1998? 1998, Mom. the World Cup final with, you remember the situation with Ronaldo? You can't with, tell with, her about it, you know. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, I love. Trouble, I trouble. You know, so I trouble, I trouble. But um, that, that, that came to mind. That, that incident um, was one of the, the basic biggest um, incidents in, in terms of uh, team sheets uh, uh, going awry. Coach Karimi, you could um, uh, make mention of what happened if you recall um, that eventful day when uh, El Phenomenon was meant to be slated to appear in the final and suddenly he was in, then he wasn't in, in, out, in, out, shake it all about. That was a nightmare. But yes, Jamaica. And administration and culture, the culture. Is it something as a source of pride? And is it something that we can aspire to actually improve? Things can get better. Um, it, everything can get better, you know, but here yeah, my issue with with we as a nation. Too much I and me. Not enough we. That is the issue. And is if I don't know. And me don't know, nobody else can tell me. So if, if you, Mr. Richard, know that can assist the program, your help is not important because I should know and me should know. So you're not important. So that is a problem because if it if it takes eight months and this young lady have played for Jamaica maybe one or twice. There is no excuse and documentation shouldn't be completed. You understand? There is no excuse. And for her to be here and then the situation that is dangling over, it don't look good. So we need to come out of the eye and me. Is it the nation? The nation is bigger than I and me, you know. Is we. You understand? It's a collective and the, the diaspora is, is not included of those, the little Jamaica that out there. It's wide and broad. For me to reach where I am and today is my auntie and my uncle where they overseas, we send the little stuff them to my mother where they have ate away in a one little room. So if them never did a help, me only they are so. So everybody is important. But you have too much people dealing with I and me. So if I see something and I know of someone that can see something, and I recall and say, X and Y can see, see, you know, they don't want to hear from me because they should know. So they can make the call. So me, I said, but it no matter if me they tell you. The important thing, we need to get the thing done because Jamaica comes first. Go ahead, go ahead. 
When you know, see the example last week, the two gentlemen, what you hear them saying? I and me. I and me. You don't hear anything about we, you know. We need to get this nation better. I and me. So that is a problem. I don't think we can get out the I and me and put we. 94 to 98 up to 2001, the period where Rene Simons came. I don't like to go back, no, but the history is there. The 94 to 98, him create we. We, the nation, need to get on board. You, the little man that driving the car, we're playing a game today. I want you to turn on the light from in the morning for support and solidarity to the nation. You're turning on your light in a day when when sun has shine, but he might tell you, turn it on from in the morning, because we dey on one, one pathway. Everybody dey on the same pathway. And you put your car with the... We have qualification now. And I don't even see one car with two little flag on it and one big flag on the dashboard. It's in 94, 98. The amount of flag, you see, they can create that synergy, that atmosphere, that togetherness. Is that making you know if you can go to World Cup, you know? The whole band and everybody feeling the energy and the vibes and everybody want to go. We need to get back that. Too much I am me. Too much of that. We need to get that out and get back the nation building. Because at the end of the day, if the girls don't qualify, the younger generation, my daughter that I have, that is 13, that like the game, we look to play it more than me. I feel tell her, say, you can't get a scholarship out of it, you know. Just pass and move. Never teach you for pass and move. So you don't have to be an international footballer, but you can't help. Daddy save some money so you can get the scholarship. So you say, yes, daddy, I'm going to try. It's simple. And FIFA spending a lot of money more in the women game. So we need to encourage young ladies. That's what I'm saying to you. For me personally, if I was in charge of the federation, every development lead must have a female in it. Or a young lady in it must. I don't know if, as long as not over 18, between 6 to 17, you must play a female. Must. Because we want the game to develop. We, not, we don't have enough that we can play competitive, but we can encourage them to come out. You understand? I'm built from there. It's just my opinion. Real talk, Crystal. I actually want to um ask a question there. Um, while she was speaking, um, thank you for that, by the way, coach. I want to ask you, um, from a coaching perspective, what does unified synergy looks like? And obviously, you you include everyone from the top to the bottom, to those of us in the twelfth man, and you extend that to the media as well, because media does play a role in um. You know, when you look at club football and how they treat the nation's sweetheart, their favorite football team, um, very different to how they treat the team that they don't really care too much about. So what does unified um, synergy looks like to you? Unified, for me, you know, is, is all of us helping each other, right? Um, growing. Because at the end of the day, you know, you're going into this second phase of the qualification, you know, is the top eight of the best, you know. And all those other seven countries telling themselves and me going to, you know. So if we can get everybody, even just to just getting them just to just be a part, just be a part of the whole program, the, the, the girls them can see we um supporting them when we're in the street we can identify ourselves with them is a very important thing you know when you can identify make and say a tiffany that you know a she play for the regular girls you know it makes you want to run 10 times more our hey um me they all in a sovereign and me say bunny shall me see my dad and say you're gonna get her um signature from her it grow the enthusiasm so everything other important so in terms of marketing that's why i was listening but a week ago when i hear um tell our, um management said boy we don't need for the girls them you need marketing 
marketing is a very important thing. Even if me know the girls are playing, you know the girls, but and everybody know the girls are playing. So if we can market it, we can get them from products. We have too much product out here. We can we do, we can get them. We get them on it. Sell it. Sell it to the nation. We have too much youngster right now. I watched the news last night. You know, a youngster same though. Him leaving school to become a scammer. <laughs> wow. And that is my problem now. A youngster say me rather leave school because scamming and chopping up things make better money. My blood run cold. So we having problem. So, the, so let go go back again. You see, the I and me are killing it. Not enough of you playing the game to have fun anymore. Because I'm saying to themselves, what is the end result? Because there is preference to certain aspect of the game, to certain club or certain. So we have to be careful. So the synergy is very important. It build, commu um, build community, it bring energy, it bring vibes, it bring peace of mind. And we need that the, 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 for a long while. The, 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 the nation needs something that we can look as positivity. The girls are here. You understand? We fail with the meal and disappointed with the meal. So we can use, we can use that platform and say, yeah, well, what we did wrong there? Don't make the same mistake here. It was the right wrong this in about two months ago, you know. So it's not hard for right, you know. And if you look at the pattern, we are 51 in the world. And when we started out with the meal, we were 50 something in the world. And when we ended up now, nearly about 70 yard. So we have to be very careful. The the issue with um well, I think I think you've made some good points there, um, coach. But the issue or the, the one fear I have is aside from people like us, so guys in the comment section and you know, my panelists, I kind of feel like not enough people care to want to go the extra mile um and uh, it's it's just sad because i'm thinking like what else can be done to actually persuade you to to do things differently be it from where the federation is concerned and, and at times in in the um 12 man section as well like i'm i'm at a loss like I, I don't actually know what else we could do differently tell a lie i do actually um, have a few ideas but the guys at the top have to be open for um suggestions just like how you see both gaffers in the men camp and in the women's camp keep taking a keen ear into what um people in the media are saying and also the 12th man because we see things differently from how they see it and also we're, we're more in the known because we a lot of say for example my generation we we are now growing up or living in a social media day and age so people who are in charge on the board they should be more willing and open to listen to what we have to say so long as we're doing so respect respectfully but it seems as if as, as things stand the only ones who are open or keeping a keen ear is um mr paul hall and also mr vin blaine as well obviously they can only do so much in terms of generating purposeful changes yeah but um leaders of men you know can lead by the example they show, you know, for example, the reggae girls are playing yesterday and in terms of you are doing your press conference in terms of lead, leading up to the game. I can't tell you what to say or how to say it, but you have to drive it. You have to drive the, the energy from there and the enthusiasm from there. And with that, it, it, it starts with you as a coach. Be a little, hey, Rene, me not tell you, say anybody must be Rene Simone, you know, make that all clear. But you have to lead, and you have to lead and believe in what you're, you're leading with. The game is at this sub in a park. No one, when we reach at the game, me, me, the, the way you're selling it. Me, me suppose when we reach, me not suppose it can't be able to reach. That is all traffic and congested it's supposed to be. The amount of school we're supposed to have ticket going to that game yesterday. It is it, supposed to flood the schools. 
we know the, we know what is happening with the women games in Jamaica in terms of support it's very different from the male in terms of person going to the game so you have to you have to do something that is different sometimes you have to in terms of maybe lose monetary wise but gain in other ways in terms lose of the gain. lose the gain until you can gain so you have to sell it in a different way but who's who do you think is in in charge of um selling that because you touched on the um the the gaffer there or you're saying it's it's the job of the it gaffer? Must be, it must between it must it, it must between him and the marketing team uh between him and the, the whole federation you are selling the game you're here selling the game the other bloggers are selling the game For the last two weeks, you have been on the pro and 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 and, and sometimes you have to say, wait, tell her we're going for the next level. And every time it's on me, 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 me phone. For the last week, I don't I don't know if you sleep, you drink coffee. Right? No. <laughs> no, I'm being honest because I think for the last week I here and talking about the females. Only female, you know, I'm talking about nobody else. So you're selling the game. And um, formula, military, the, the coaches, Dex, IMAX, you name them, Ryan, um, these are Dark Sports, right? So, in respective of that, that aspect, what we mean, on the ground, get the girl them to be ambassador, get them out there, get them in, so even one or two of them to schools, not them can go every school, but we mean, sell them. You have a day where you call, um, you, you can sign autograph or something. You understand? For, for an hour or two, we're going to be at Sovereign. We're going to be at New Kingston Mall. Somewhere. If, if it's one, somebody you get to sign the doc, um, the, 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 uh, the shirt, it make a difference. One, one coke of full basket. Where we are away from is 10 for full one basket. It now got... Um, so it's the same thing like my mother would have tell me, so when you're working, save $500 every week. Don't wait till the end of the year if you try to save the whole life. Because you got too much problem them time there. So by the end of the year, you have enough can spend. Wise words. Wise words, Coach Cruz. It was, it was, Wise it was, words. It's it not nothing where me have figured out. Uh, it just there. It is simple there. Get the girls them out there. You sit on and get people around it that can sell the product. We're going to be in half a tree in such and such. Um, COVID lifted now. We are here training in Jamaica. Um, we're going to be at St. George's College training 2 o'clock till 5 o'clock. Make it be out there, the media know, um, the public know. So even if one, somebody can even come look over the fence. Why the girl in my training, the one that looks sexy. But I'm a girl, I'm still all right. You never know. And the wagon is them is the biggest thing them you need at games. Cause them bring them bring things to everybody important. Every country you go you have wagonists. So if you don't have no wagonists, you don't have anything. And I then think, after, go on, go on there, coach. After them become that them then they become believers. You never know. It, I say transfer, you know. Mm -hmm. that's it, you have somebody that coach a game. I usually look at the female game. I'm being honest with you. Look at it. But in the last four to five years, I see long I'm start watching. I say, you know, say if you want to coach a team and you want to show all boys to play in a particular way and yes, a pattern of play. You know, say the female them show you how to do that. Cause them is one thing with female. Them follow everything we coach say most of the time. Them not deviate. With the gentleman, they may have to tell them a whole heap of thing and try to remind them for it. But the girl, them, the coach said, move to there, move to here, make sure you pass to that person. When you go along to the flank, you look at this person, you see the pattern, you see where they might try Then You can teach a young student, you see what she do. You see when she overlap what she do, she look for her support. When she get the support, when the next person do. That more what, remember what female give me like the patterns. Them play in a particular way. Everything has to be adding up. As I'm saying with our team, we need to be more organized in terms of the movements. 
We have individuals, a lot of individuals, and I love them. Imagine if we can get the time for put them to, to be collective. We can be very dangerous. Very interesting observations, Coach Kurume. Crystal, I can see you musing on a few points that um, have been raised. They've come thick and fast from Coach Kurume. Crystal, over to you. Um, do you want to chime in? Uh, for, I thought you wanted to say something there. No, I, I'm, 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 I'm fascinated by what Coach Kurume has said. Uh, the reality is, 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 we love the game. All of us love the game. I love the game. If I tell you what is happening right now within my space, maybe tears will have full up your eye, but it's the only thing right now that kind of keep me even fever half an hour to an hour away from certain personal things that is happening right now, presently. So I was here just sitting at my desk, was supposed to go back to a place, but I just say, I just need to get my mind out of somewhere that you understand those for a Certain moment situation yeah the game is very it helps you a lot you understand so and it's bigger than all of us and that is one of the things that we need to understand and as i say i keep repeating it i need but the we the we need for this game to grow in jamaica on the right part i saw i saw in the comment section coach karume that someone uh, made a comment that there is no we in team now that could be tongue-in-cheek but there is no we in team but the case you've put forward and uh, you've you've struck a chord where i'm concerned i must say because i've not thought of it exclusively like that i've rec i've recognized the importance of the reggae girls in terms of uh the the happiness that they bring the joy they bring the the patterns of play the effort the stories that they have untold um, I think that promoting of the game, including their stories, is ever so important. Um, and I'd love for them to be able to um, feel free and welcome to come onto the various uh, Jamaican uh, YouTube platforms to, once they've got the time and opportunity, it would be great to have them to share. But um, no we in team, and yet that 12th man that Crystal um, talks about oftentimes is is something that I think is really, really important. It's uh, it, that collective, that unity, that movement that really um, plays a large part in 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 any team's uh, success. I've been over here in England, and Crystal can you know testify when we're talking about yeah, like the Euro 2020. You know, it's coming home. You know, every four years something's coming home, and uh, you know the three lions and the, the whole fans getting behind them, the media getting behind the team, and that sense of positivity and and that can really lift the nation as well as cow um the opposition but as, as as a nation you feel that there's a kind of momentum that builds and i think stressing the importance of we um from administrators to uh, the the coaches the physios the fans the armchair fans those who um can go to the stadiums even the critics even they can acknowledge that there are you know real real positives that the reggae girls bring and i think those ideas you're talking about you know the, the reggae girls going to schools um to sign some autographs some shopping centers excellent excellent ideas i don't know about the logistics of it because these the, the, some of the, the um players obviously they've, they've they come over they fly over they've got to prepare they've got to get over the jet lag then they've got to prepare and go through the tactical um requirements of the game so maybe time is a consideration in terms of um factoring in you know a, a three four hours where they go to um public places um post covid to, to 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 share and talk and um you know sign footballs and give out footballs and, and whatnot maybe that's a, a difficulty that um the jff um have not been able to factor in uh to uh, preparations but i love the ideas that you're, you're 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 referring very 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 much because they've got stories crystal's got that smile and when she smiles and and the laughter comes in you know i can see coach coach I, i'm sure you've watched the shows and when you see crystal's um smile and laughter we, it, it's infectious but in a, such a positive way go, go ahead go ahead either one of you good folks as i check an arm check out the um, comment section. Hit the like, share, and subscribe button, people. You're listening to Real Talk here. Real Talk on Talawa TV from Coach 
Coach, Coach Minzy, J. Russ, Pagan180, hit the likes and share button. Follow suit, even brain drain. Go ahead. I just want to say, um, sorry. Um, first of all, thank you there for sharing a little bit of a insight into your personal life. Obviously, you didn't have to do that there, Coach. So um, thank you for um, sharing that um, warm moment with us. And I hope that whatever it is you're going through, I pray to God that you make it out at the end of the tunnel i'm sure you will um but i'm um, yeah just thought i'll let you know that myself i think i'll probably speak for the guys in the comment section as well and my co-host that yeah we'll definitely um rooting for you over on this side and this is the reason why we have such a emotional connection with where our team is concerned be it the men's team or the women's team because for a lot of us we look at football as a stress reliever and when things aren't going to plan, um, yes, we're not guaranteed to win every single game, but we just can't settle for complacency or set settle for. Sometimes it's not even complacency; it's just you being lazy. It's just utter laziness. Um, again, because we look to football, football is like people's safe space. You know, a lot of people like what Karumi said. People have stuff that's going on in their personal life, challenging stuff, and we look to football as a escape. And then we go there and everything is just erratic and, you know, there's just crap all over the walls, basically. That does something to us that triggers that another emotion in us. Um, it actually makes matters worse if you're going for a lot of stressful time and then your, your football team or your national side is stressing you out. It makes matters worse. So that's the reason why we keep on putting the, the federation under the, the microscope. And yes, they have done a few positive things off late and we've given them credit for that. They've done a few things positive there on social media. But for me, it's like they take one step forward and then take 10 steps back. I don't know if it's in, intentional or unintentional, but they, they there is some laziness there, definitely some laziness there. And I don't think they might, but they come across as they're just not on the same page as the 12th man because in the 12th man section over here, we live and breathe football, live and breathe. And you can only tell that, well, you can tell that based on the fact that doesn't matter where we are in the world, be it in England, be it in the States, Canada, or on home soil, wherever the men's and the women's team are playing, we're always up tuning in watching them so if they can't realize just how much we love football and care about football then I, I i don't know what else to tell them you know um i myself have touched on a few things that Karumi touched on which is i was smiling because again it's like great minds think alike i've said on my streams before that at this point it's baffling that you're not doing road shows for the girls that you're not taking them around different parishes that you're not taking them to uh um what do you want to call it the mall the shopping center to sign autographs you're not taking them into these um impoverished communities so that they can be the representation that um young girls need and are desperately um sweet seeking mentors or, or or an idol to look up to so you know if we can come up with something that's so simple in terms of marketing and trying to galvanize the nation i am completely lost and confused as to why the federation can't do it and you know they have no right to be offended when people call them complacent or lazy because they leave us with no other word but to describe them as such but the, you see it's a whatever i'm saying and, and i'm suggesting it's all these things are things that happen with teams that are of super 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 stars right and they they have to they have come they have um they have to make the commitment to go on these they, these movements in terms of going to the mars and so media day they would have call it like the media days and so forth because you are the coach you know you know you're starting 11 up. Sorry, no. You know you're at least you're starting 11 plus 3 or 4 change, you know. So if you're that concerned about the, the issue with the traveling and their legs, you have reserves on the bench. And addition, you use those players depending on the journey of the media day. If it is a close between where the game at like for example, the game at Sabina Park two days before you have an hour at Sovereign and Bonisha. It's just an example, you understand? So 
it can work. Everything can find a way out because at the end of the day, everything helps. Every single thing helps. I tell you, you never know. You see, my grandmother tell me, see, if it's one, somebody you can change, at least you're doing one good thing. I used to refer back to the, the I am me and the we, and them said there is no we in team, but in the logics of everything, you need a collective to make the team. I and me can make the team. So you need we to make the team. So I will keep saying to you, we need we to make the change for this thing to improve. Because as I said again, two months ago, we get disappointed. And we can write the report, and the report can write, and we can use that same report and change the report for the girls. As I said before, the males were 51 or 50th in the world when we started the campaign. The girls are 50 or 51. We could go in the reverse way and bring it down to 30 or 34 or 20 odd, not the reverse going up. So the ball is in our court. We need private sector. We need, no, sorry. We need more private sectors on board. And I appreciate the ones them that come on board and help and assist. It's very needed. And as I said before, money make the mayor run. And run very fast. Very fast. Range. Range. And my term, as I use to my youngsters, them, hungry man cannot fight war. And that is life. Hungry man cannot fight war. Uh, so if you're at home and you have a youngster and him going to school and you're not feeding him and you expect him to get AAA, no, 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 not going to get it. I'm not going to be able to study. So you need three good meals a day as much as possible. So hungry man cannot fight war. So if I'm coaching a team, and if you don't cook food, I don't coach. I don't coach if you don't cook. Because my warriors have to be fed. Not fed in my pocket with money, you know. Food. So I know that they are properly nutri nutrition in the place. So hungry man cannot fight war. It's reality. reality what do you think? Look at, right, Chelsea in a in our situation right now and everybody at Chelsea is um, trembling. Why? Because they're thinking about them work, um, the situation in terms of unemployment could come on board because new management might take over so maybe they're not in keeping with those that are there. So it, it money make me run fast. Not only fast enough, faster too. And it's reality. Why do you think we qualify 98? When them come with the program, say, adapt a player program. You adapt Talawa, you adapt Richard, and you adapt Karumi. Grace adapt me, give me monthly payment. X adapt Richard, give you a monthly payment. Because at the time, every player couldn't go to overseas. So we create an atmosphere of play, adapt a player program. So at least you're getting a proper income on a monthly basis so it can be sustainable for a period. So you add upon that going forward now, and I don't think we're adding it properly. We have players that is overseas. We have local base players that become overseas base players. But what we do in that, I don't even want to go to the meal, but what we do is like we just bring them home and say we have all these jamaicans so put them together no that is not what you're supposed you're supposed to don't have a system in play and a style of play so any players that you're looking for suppose you say we, we play four three three you know we play quick players down the flank so the name that you suggest to me i'm gonna watch him in two games or three games and see if she, she quick or fast or she can't add something no she can't add that is all your fit things you know we might be wrong, so they can correct me. 
Yeah, I think it's how you've, you've touched on a few interesting things. There. I think it would take you maybe a few more games um, to watch the, the reggae girls because um, in terms of system, um, their system, in is, if you're talking about bringing a puzzle into the system and the puzzle fitting in perfectly, I think they do that better than their male counterparts. No disrespect to where the men's team is concerned. I think there's a few like-for-like -like, um, substitutions there. I think that's been on show, particularly in the first two games with players coming in and then coming, coming off, coming, going off the bench and then players coming off the bench and it's almost as if it's just a like for like substitution because the energy um, remains the same, the tempo remains the same, and so on. And I think we even saw that in this one um, window against Cayman Islands. Think of Tiffany Cameron and Shade coming into the fold from off the bench. Energy like for like, I'm um, taking things up a notch. So I think the puzzle there with regards to uh, player recruitment, I think they're doing a good job um, over with the um, women's team. It's just about fine tuning. And I think it's actually great that we're in a position where we're saying we like the team, but there is room for improvements. That's a positive because. If I was to sit here and say there is no room for improvements, I'll be afraid. And the reason why I'll be afraid is because that means that we're at the top. The worst thing about being at the top is, is it, it's, it is inevitable that you're going down because nothing good lasts forever. As great as the United States are, they're not going to be the number one team in the world forever. So they're going to be feeling some pain at some point. But for us, we're building, building, getting better. I, doubt, I have no idea what will be our greatest achievement in the history of um, Jamaican football, not just women's football. But the least I can say is I'm excited because we're going to get better. Um, that is one thing I do believe. You guys in the comment section, you're awfully quiet. I see the little banter there between um, Owen, Owen. I think it's Pagan as well. <laughs> or brain dre brain dre actually and owen owen i see you guys going at it in the comments section but let me know what you think of um what's been discussed so far um back over to you mr richard stevens i've got a question it's on um, beating on my mind i'm going to ask coach karume and you can pipe in crystal as well as the viewers and subscribers please do uh, i was a little surprised i don't know how um, money's running in jamaica i don't know how pe people's pocket stays but the admission price i believe was three thousand dollars it was originally going to be a thousand dollars to um enter sabina park to uh follow the reggae girls but three thousand dollars i don't know how the land lays in terms of how many people would afford that and if there was any more discounted price but my question is coach karumi to what extent to what degree is jamaica a footballing culture does it have football anywhere near its dna does it have football beating at the heart of the mental emotional consciousness of the country it seems a relatively young fledgling country when it comes to football and yet i've seen the likes of i'm sure um interview players from decades ago um, who were playing football? Uh, uh, no, not a professional, professional setup necessarily, um, but they were playing football. But uh, where we see the likes of the Premier League in England, when we see the Bundesliga, League uh, uh, Serie A in Italy, to what degree is Jamaica a footballing culture? Because it still surprises me that marketing companies aren't jumping on board, taking opportunities, and the JFF on um responding and, and 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 encouraging and looking for opportunities um which may not be hugely costly to um get exposure for the likes of the reggae girls maybe it's because it's not a footballing culture or certainly if it is it's a fledgling footballing culture in many respects what say you coach karuma I come like a ball out the wall. I'm a Miggle Stone. Have you? Have you? Uh, you never put the, the pads out. The who, pad who, out. Who, who give the ball? Was that Courtney Walsh or somebody else? Who was the bowler? It's a very good. It, it's <laughs> a very good, very, very good question because it been, it been, it's a question been asked. It's a question been asked. Period. In it over the time with people asking if we love the game and we have a culture for the game. 
And for me, we do, you know, we do have the love for the game. But for the game to be loved more, you know, you see the thing called marketing. I think people feel to understand the importance of you marketing something, you know, that can be able to sell. Track and feel is something that sell. They sell that program properly. I don't think we sell enough of the football properly so the youngsters can love the game. Right? As I was saying to you before, it hurt when you hear a youngster say, hey, I want to leave school to do X and Y and it's not something X and y. For him, he think it's something positive. But we need to we need to get the youngsters them back playing the game, having fun. We need to get back that, getting the youngsters playing and having fun. Once we start doing that fun with development, what we are doing is playing to win at the youngsters, right? When you go and see the youngsters playing and you're playing at the little tournament, you have five players playing. And when you look at the team, you have 15 players. And there's only five playing, and the next ten sit down on the bench. And these are seven, and eight, and nine, ten year old. And the next ten sit down. But two we need to win, these five are going to play. If we are lead ten low, we we'll bring on two or three of those. That is not development. So, so when you see the youngsters, them now are deviating to, it's two things the youngster them wanted either become an artist or we need to like call the word, that type of thing. I, it's sad. So we as a nation need to go back and get back to basic and get back the youngster them playing the game to have fun. So I think we do have a culture for the game, but in respect of everything, in terms of the economics of things, to say, boy, to spend $3,000 to a game is not everybody could find three thousand dollars so you have to find you have companies you have companies that you can sell tickets to so they can sponsors to schools and so forth you find you sit down and find people that can think out of the box right you have companies might can able to send might don't want to come to but them have other person there are people will want but them can't be able to buy the ticket so yeah you sponsor, you're, they are going to sponsor maybe 20 tickets and so forth. So is that collective thinking you need? You need a committee of thinkers, not a committee of bodies. Is that different, you know? <laughs> not a committee of body, and then you have one somebody that tell the body what to do. No, you need a committee of thinkers of what we can do or what we cannot do. You understand? So that is just my issue, right? If we, if, 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 if we never love the game, the level of, of, of enthusiasm, all right. If we never love the game, there will never be so much blagger. We are most blagger than anybody else on YouTube, you know? Oh, yeah, sir. Jamaican right now. We are more blagger more than church in Jamaica. Right now. <laughs> on YouTube, right now, present. Before we did the reverse, no, the blagger, they might take it off. No. So... We are, we, are, we are a person that, that, but we need people to think out of the box. Sell the game more, sell the game more. Flood the market. You understand? So, me, 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 we, are, we, we are lovers of the game, but we don't like losers. And I don't think anybody do, but we, we, we don't like losers. We, we're very aggressive towards that. You understand? That's a very interesting point there, Coach Karim. It's very interesting. I saw the formula, the great formula, sports piping, with a very interesting comment. Formula, if you're out there, if you want to jump on, if you're busy, respect. But if you can jump on, jump on. But you made a very interesting point, formula sports, which was that um, Jamaicans love the international game, but not necessarily the local game. I also saw a comment that um, football is, at local level, not organised sufficiently so um the structures the systems are in place which will include no doubt the marketing to um have jamaican um uh, footballing culture 
um, bigged up and increasing at an exponential rate. But it's interesting, loving of the international game, the Wagonish culture, it, it seems to me, and I wonder if this is the case, could it be that the reggae girls are stuck or caught between a rock and a hard place or caught between the two in that they are winning, but winning at a particular level and maybe not winning enough or not a great enough team. So when it comes to meeting in America or Canada or Mexico, uh, there are some fans who would rather dodge or side sideline them or dodge them, avoid them because you can keep winning. But when you meet these teams, there's a higher chance or likelihood that the team may lose, um, which loses the um, feel-good effect. So I wonder if that's the, the case because the reggae girls are winning. They're playing a good brand of football. There are characters there. There's a terrific sense of unity and there's potential there. They're not big heads. There's essential potential. The talent is there. The characters are there. You know, Tiffany Cameron's, Khadija, I don't want to miss them out, the Swaby sisters. There are so many stories. And yet, we don't see that the stadiums packed or we don't see them, you know, um, there's something not quite tallying up. Coach Karimi, could you put your finger on it? Malik, we know that you're in there as well, so you can chime in is, as um, in Wednesday. Before, and of course, Crystal. Before Coach um, chimes in, I'm just adding to what you've said there. It could be a number of reasons. I don't buy the whole, um, we're only paying this team, so I'm not going to give support because Jamaica can only play who is in front of them. If the girls are only being tasked to play against Haiti or Grenade, and how dare them if that's the way they're thinking? How dare you try to disrespect the opponents that we've played so far? Because these are women who have just had to work maybe even three times as hard as Jamaica to even try and score against us, really and truly, given that we are the superior um, team going into our group and also in the um, um, Caribbean nation as well. It's not an easy task going up against Jamaica, but there were a few times there for those four games where I felt a little bit uneasy, a little bit uncomfortable, especially when you've got um, Grenada doing what they do, wasting time. Bermuda, we kick things off against Bermuda on her home soil. The result doesn't ne necessarily speak of the game itself. Cayman Islands as well, or Energizer Bunny. We saw what happened against um, Dominican Republic last night. No game has been a walk, complete walk in the park for us. There's been a few um, hit and misses there. There's been a few things that's not quite pleasing on the eye even last night's match last night's match when they pulled the trigger and found the equalizer i was like here we go here we go because up until that point up until we um tucked in uh cayman islands dominican Re republic were sitting on top of the table for a reason they were there for a reason i think we're in a position now and i've said it before where people are be it intentionally or unintentionally using that tainted paintbrush that they used to paint the men's side on a paint in the women's side and that can't work because you're always going to be miserable they're literally two different teams completely one team don't stand a chance of getting to Qatar because their um, quest is now finalised. The other is just starting their quest of going to the next World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. So I don't understand the way people make their judgment with um, the Jamaica women's team. But I feel like it's just illogical to say that you're not going to be happy for... I've seen people in the, in the comment section saying it's only this team, it's only that team. They can only play who is put in front of them. They can't say, I'm going to bypass playing uh, Grenada and go and play Canada and USA. Matter of fact, you need to play Grenada, Bermuda, Dominican Republic and Cayman Islands before you can play Canada because you need the practice games. Not saying those games are practice games, but you need to find your stride. You don't jump the gun and say you want to play against the best team in the world. USA are number one for a reason. So I, I, I don't understand the way we way some people um look and analyze football. It's a little bit confusing at times. Before I go any further and I pass back over to my lovely co-host, uh, Mr. Richard Stevens, Mr. Coach Karumi there, Mr. Malik Mills, I'm going to bring back in one of my favorite people. It's 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 kind of like the male version of me. I hope you don't mind me saying that. Um it is Mr. Formula. I want you to say this properly, guys. Formula without E and a hyphen. Formula. 
sports, okay? <laughs> man, I'm That's happening, man. That's happening. What more formula? You know we need to hit the like. We need to hit the like button as soon as you see the introduction of the big man. And uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 respect, full respect. Yeah. 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 Stony Hill and a rural St. Andrew. Stony Hill and Uptown St. Andrew. <laughs> the rich people St. Andrew, man. A country part of St. Andrew, believe, man. <laughs> hey, but, hey, Formula, put a pin in what you're going to say. I've just noticed, because I, I, we really want to hear what you are say. Pagan 180, Crystal, he's a live wire, you know. He asked me if I can come up in two sentences or less what the JFF you guys can pipe in if, if, as you as you please. What can the JFF do from a UK perspective to raise the profile of the footballing game? Well, as regards the reggae girls, I say raise the profile of the reggae girls. Cheap and cheerful ways, creative ways, thinking outside the box and using examples such as that that Karumi, Coach Karumi used, you can get the ladies into the malls, onto TV shows, into schools, welcome them onto platforms such as this, but increase the marketability. And when they're being interviewed, IA, IE, the, uh, the JFF themselves, they should be raising the flag and banner, not a red flag to say, don't touch this with a barge pole, but a banner with pride that shows and tells the world at every opportunity they can get that the reggae girls are one of their proudest um, 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 brands and they are willing to invest in their time and energy and encourage companies and fans across the diaspora to support and look up these outstanding individuals have who have stories to tell and they are painting pictures and are adding to the lives of Jamaican fans across the world. Raise the marketing visibility of these reggae girls. Formula, over to you, sir. The floor is yours, sir. No, I mean, to, to add to the, the, the current discussion, I think that, um, I think we need to be patient with the women's game. I think that many of us think that what's taking place with the women's game is such a beautiful thing and we want to share it with every single Jamaican and we don't quite understand how every single Jamaican is, is not quite on board. Um, but I think the women's game globally is growing. It's maturing. It almost seems as if it, it's kind of exploding globally. Right, and I think it's only a matter of time before we as Jamaicans catch on to said explosion. Um, yeah, so I just think we need to be patient with it. I think that, or as I said in a previous comment, I think we are lovers of international football and we have a strong international football culture in terms of we, you know overseas football that will follow whether it be a national team or whether it be club football in England or Spain or Italy or one of the top five leagues. But the local football product in terms of club football here in Jamaica is not marketed as good as it probably should. It's not structured as well as it, it could be structured um the infrastructure is not the best and uh, the quality of players that are produced are not the best because of the the stagnant development structure that is currently in place not the talent the players have the talent but the development structure is is far from anything that is taking place you know in proper footballing jurisdictions 
and also the national team isn't really performing very well either so it doesn't capture the imagination right of you know jamaicans to be supportive of the the, the you know any form of, of local football i think the only aspect of local football that is doing well is the regular girl senior team and i think because women's football is still very much i wouldn't say in it's in its infancy i wouldn't say it's in its infancy but there's still a lot of upside there's still a lot of growth there's still a lot of exposure that women's football needs and it, it's getting there it's getting there i think even the girls i think you know, I don't know if Crystal would agree with this. Wouldn't you say, Crystal, that the girls seemingly have a bit more support for this campaign than the last campaign? I don't know. It, it, it seems as if more people are coming on board. I think it's I only think, a matter of time. Um, I think visibly I've seen more support. I can't judge this because there's two different types of support. There's the support that we see on social media. I think the support in social media has expanded. Um. But I think it's pr probably more of the same in terms of like persons showing up at the stadiums and giving their um, support. But I think on social media, you can weigh up that the support um, has increased. But the girls, for me, the girls have always had support visibly on, on social media, even dating back to the, um, the last World Cup campaign. Yeah, I mean, from, for me personally, I, I was... I was looking at some of the clips from the game and some of the images from the game and there seems to be an outpouring of love. They have a, as I'll tell you this much, the regular girl supporter base, you know, still needs expanding and there's room for, for growth where that is concerned. But those who are a part of that supporter base are very much ecstatic and very much... I, the, the, the word they lose me right now, but they are very much very passionate about the team you can see it from the, the pictures and the videos coming from sabina park and just how much love the girls received you know from the the, the supporters at the stadium i mean it, it looked sometimes as if it was some superstars on show and there are some superstars on show in the women's game that was that was at sabina park um and the jamaican regular girls team so you know i, I think we just need to be patient though guys you know me personally you know i am becoming a lot more invested in women's football than i used to be you know and um not to say i didn't follow it up but i'm i'm far more invested in it now you know watching more of it now and so forth and so forth and i just think with, with time you know we will catch on to this wave that is currently taking place with with women's football just exploding around the world. And something I wanted to touch on that I've seen in the comment section, someone said Jamaica should introduce back the women's soccer league in Jamaica. But with that, I mean, that's a good thing, but then it could also be a bad thing. Reason why is because look at the men's national team. A lot of people we're trying to, you know, say, they, oh, they don't want these players from England or this country, this country coming into the team. They want the team to be, you know, all players from Jamaica. So it could, it could cause confusion just like with the man team, which I don't want because the team that the women have, the chemistry and that the players have and the sisterhood that they have is great. And that's something that the main team would need to get, hopefully, in the next three to you know three years. But we're not talking about them right now. But I just want the sisterhood to stay within the team and not change. For for some strange reason, though, that energy and that vibe hasn't transcended over to the regular girls. I, I don't know if it's because the quality of the players that we are getting, um, you know, with, with Jamaican links is so good that, you know, there, there isn't the vibe that, oh, there are only 
come into play for us because they can't make it for another team. You know, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm speculating here. I, I, I really don't know. But that vibe isn't really there with the with the women's national team in terms of people saying, oh, but you know, you have some people who really and truly don't really like the, 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 the amount of foreigners. And to be fair, the, 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 the local women's program, and that's something that are in all of this, I think we really have to, we can't forget the local women's program. Because, I mean, from my understanding of it, from my understanding of it, there is no club football being played and at the women's senior level in the country. And that does not bode well for the program going forward. You cannot have a, a successful national team and local club football is dead, basically non-existing, right? I don't think that's sustainable. I don't know. Probably you guys disagree. But even if it is sustainable, it would be nice for, you know, women footballers who are currently on the island aspiring women footballers, young women footballers coming up to really and truly see a path, right? I mean, Bonnie Shaw saw a path. Yes, Jody Brown left young and went to college. You know, let those not be the ones that slip through the cracks, so to speak. You know, we want to see more of, of, of Jody Browns and through the Carters. And to be fair, when those ladies came through the ranks, there was club football being played, so... Yeah, but I, I don't know why. For some strange reason, that negative energy over at the reggae boys section, hopefully it stays over there and doesn't come and, and spoil, you know, <laughs> the, the, the wonderful vibes over at the reggae boys, at the reggae girls, you know, side of the, 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 the you know, the, the spectrum, so to speak. You know what I think it point. is? There, um, sorry, there, um, Richard. You know what I think it is, um, formula in terms of you're comparing that unity. I think it's down to a number of factors, but I think one of the biggest, like I said, one of the biggest compliment and factor in relation to what you've said there is the fact that they they are private, and that simply means that they they clearly talk amongst themselves and not outsiders and i think that's the best way to keep things internal that doesn't mean that nobody literally no one knows if there's internal issues there if people don't like each other who cuz at the end of the day like you're not going to all like your colleagues they are your colleagues at the end of the day no one can sit here and say they like all their colleagues but at the end of the day you have to be professional with them i think that's what you see with the reggae girls is it is kept in house. That is one of the main difference between them and the and the reggae boys. And for me, it's just so beautiful to see. And like I said, I hope they can just continue that. Whatever internal issues that arise, just keep it in house. Because all it takes is for you to speak to the wrong person. That person then goes and tells this person. This person tells that person. Before you know it, it's Chinese whispers. And what you said changes. Now, if it comes back around and it says this person said something, you're going to be looking like the bad person because, yes, you did speak outside of your circle, but you may not have said what is being circulated as the rumor or the allegation. So I think it's just interesting to see that their group, their network is well more fine-tuned and tight-lipped compared to the, the, the men's team. There's too many allegations over on the, since we've started this process again for the second, um, hopefully successive World Cup cycle. We've not heard no allegations where the women's team is concerned, not one rumor flying around. I can't count the amount of times we heard allegations where the men's team is concerned, and that is that is one of the reasons why they failed too much rumor, too, too much gossip. But the but the Everything starts with leadership, you know. The leader have to be, have to lead from the front. And for me personally, I, I want to give a big shout out to all the bloggers because Uno have did, Uno do a wonderful job in terms of, from, I, I start doing some research on the ladies just because I, I start watching the, the program for the last two, two to three weeks, especially with Talawan, um, Farmer and the breaking down of the players 
IMAX and so forth. So I start doing some research and identify players. So one night I remember you're talking about Juice Spence. So we have to be here and game number four. So we can start my research. So you're doing, you're all doing wonderful job getting it out there. And as I said, the leader has to lead from the front and have to stick to leading by example, by doing the right thing. And for me personally, the one word that govern everything is just to be honest. Just to be honest with the group, honest with the, the, the public, and you don't hear this, you don't hear that, you don't hear that this around here. It just being honest and be clear so everybody's on the same page, right? So we just be have a clear pathway to go forward. Good point. Good point. Formula. <clears throat> uh, Crystal, the, the, the point I was going to make previously, I thought um, Formula was making some very interesting observation. Formula Sports, do you think having a strong women's Jamaican league would vastly increase the likelihood that the connection and the love of the reggae girls and the women's game would increase to a large degree. I ask that because it's interesting. I've taken it for granted because of the lack of drama uh, and the lack of seeming isms and schisms with a successful, um, lively reggae girls team, irrespective of where they're coming from, I thought that it's on that basis that they would receive a lot of support. They've got personalities and characters, and that could only increase the more we got to know the likes of um, Tiffany Cameron. She seems to be one of the most high profile. Khadija, big beaming um, physical presence. And uh, there's so many, so many players that you could hear more from. But because there was so little drama and they're winning, and they've been to the World Cup and the story is they're going to try and go back to back. That was going to be enough to produce increasing popularity for the reggae girls. But that point you're making about the lack of a women's league, um, active women's league, that's got me thinking. I wonder if that is one of the reasons why the, the connectivity um, between um, the increased number of fans getting on board um, from young to old is there at the moment and it doesn't seem as if the touch paper is being lit um certainly as coach karumi said um amongst the vlogging um community with the likes of imax it um and, and coaches desk and this and that and, and formula covering the game it doesn't seem to be reflecting um to the same level necessarily um in the jamaican communities formula of course <laughs> Um, it's not just one issue, you know, when, when, when something isn't, you know, I don't want to say isn't going well, but th there are a number of different variables that are at play as to why, you know, the reggae girls, you know, program isn't as popular as many think it would be given the relative success that the girls have been encountering in, in recent years. Um, but the, the non-existence of a league currently, and also when the league was being played, you know, the lack of quality, you know, is also, does also have a part to play. Because for me personally, I think, though, you know, we weren't really producing good women's players on a whole scale level or on a whole scale basis. It was more like the occasional player coming through that world from what i saw that was you know of a certain quality from what i saw you know in watching some of the women's games in the in the league or in in, in seeing some of the footage from the games you know that i would have seen when it was up and running the the the, the league the quality of the league some would say left a lot to be desired and it's not because of the talent again the talent is here but you know, how many of the girls on the island are being exposed to proper development. I mean, we see the emergence of academies across the island, like a Phoenix Academy, like a Mount Pleasant Academy. 
you know, but how many girls are featuring in those respective academies? You know, that's also so yes, it's good that the academies are now, you know, we're getting some academies on the island offering some decent youth development, but you know, we need to, you know, be scouting more talent, you know, we need to be you know, having a, a, a vibrant, you know, more schools need to have more teams as well so that more talent can be on showcase and we need to grab those talents earlier. As I said, I mean, look, as I said... And we need to get back, we need to get back some of the, we need to get some of the better coaches back into the female games. We need to get some of, some of those coaches. That too, that too, that too. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Karun. We need, yeah, we, because I said before, the, the the female game is growing. It really growing. It's really, really growing. And there's an opportunity for young ladies to um, make a living out of it in terms of getting an income. Yeah, so we can able to get a scholarship to go away to play in the universities. So... If we can get one of the things, as a family, I say, but the coaches, we need to get some of the better coaches that coach me. Because one of the things that we about here is that if you're a male coach, you just coach males, right? But not every male coach can coach the two, but it can work if you understand what to do. You understand? So we need to get some of the coaches and that can coach males to coach some of the females to learn the the, 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 the fundamentals of the game more and so forth. So it's a, it's a holistic thing need but, to, to, to look at. Karoom, I don't mean to cut you, Karoom, but that presents its dangers, you know. That has its dangers, you know. Only if you look at, only if you, only if you're looking at eagles. You understand? <laughs> no, 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 because, because, you look, I'm going to say something that might be very controversial, but I don't give a damn. This is my <laughs> opinion. Right? The nation does have some issues with abuse, in my humble opinion, with abuse of women and young girls. So oh, that okay. presents a, a security risk. Right? We, we, I mean, will there be, be mechanisms in place for the safety of those respective young girls. I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but you never know who is who. Well, you, you, you could put in policies and procedure in terms of, and I say, yeah, it, 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 but... Who is going to enforce those policies and procedures, though, Carol? Do we need to... That's why you have the... That's why... That's why that's, I don't understand, but I keep hearing who should and who should not. Hey, see, the Jamaica Football Federation is the mother and father of the football in the country, you know. They're, they're ahead of everything, you know. So they are the one that should put in place. They're in charge of football in the country, you know. They, they are the end of everything. So for us to get the game to move, we have to put things in place. You don't, you don't know. And and we all can count on the JFF to do a fantastic job. We're <laughs> in the necessary mechanism. Yeah, but we yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, certain yeah. parents absent and leave, you know. Certain parents is absent and mm. leave, you know. So I, I, I wonder oh, my goodness gracious me. Lord of Make mercy. <laughs> that, that that is a perfect. That is a perfect way to describe the Jamaica Football Federation. Yeah, but the, 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 the thing about it, you know, we can't, we can't live without them because we need them. They can't live without us and they need us. So the important thing we need to find a solution where we can get the improvement because at the end of the day, you know, the young ladies will be left left alone so we need it, it, it need to look at because as, as you said it before when you started the, the women game in in the country is important my sister used to play my two sisters used to play for barbican 
my sister them play better than me and they play for Bob. <laughs> right? And I see where it helped them in terms of social life. You understand? So it have it it have it role. It is um it just need it does need people that can think out of the box to find a solution. Cause the game the, the, the game is not about males. The game is about males and females, and we can find that balance, right? And as I said before, my two sisters them used to play for Barbican, win three or four titles with Barbican, right? So it have it, it have it role, it have it role, it's important, right? Mr. Charlie, I used to go up there and sit down and watch my sister them are trade. So it 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 it, 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 it is it, we, we need back the, the local game. Remember, I can give an example. Thinking out of the box, champs, boys champs used to keep, girls champs used to keep. We used to get a lot of medals from the girls in the 80s and 90s. We barely, barely even make a final with the males. And when you go to boys champs, Richard, it was so ram and packed and congested. And when you look at the girls, Marilyn Natty, Cockbert, um, you, you, you name the females, them. They, when you got the girls champ, you barely could find anybody. So somebody or some group say, hey, put the two together. And have boys and girls champs at stadium. So maybe we need some great minds to say, hey, maybe we need to play the female them at 2 o'clock when we're having the male game at 4. I don't know. Is a suggestion. So... You understand? There always we can find. There always some solution can be can be found. Something, something can be found to help. Believe because we need them. It's very interesting. I mean, but... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Richard. Play formula. No, no. Come. Now, go, I was go, saying, go formula. I was saying a structure, a proper structure, definitely needs to be put in place for the women's program. Right, definitely. And I think that will will facilitate, you know, everything else coming into place. But as I said, I think we've been a little bit impatient. I think that, you know, for for for, for very long main sport has dominated the headline, the headlines. But I think slowly but surely you're seeing a shift around the world. I mean, we have seen that in sports like tennis, sports like track and field. And we're seeing it in football. Gone are the days when European women's club football would struggle to put, you know, yeah. people in the stands. When you, I mean, I was looking at a Champions League women's game. Between, PSG? No, it wasn't PSG. I think it was between Wolfsburg and Arsenal, I think it was. Yeah, my son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was Wolfsburg and Arsenal, right? Yeah, we we draw one all at home, and then we went to Wolfsburg yeah. and two one. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. the stadium, the st that is, as I'm saying to you, for me, but there were a lot of people there, Karoom. That's why it, 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 as I say, we the stadium, right? And I watch, and I and I watch PSG play a play a team, and it's the same thing. The team, the stadium was. So as I said, we just need to, but we have to start somewhere out here. I, I, I heard uh, Mr. Rudolph Speed spoke about hopefully they can start something down in, uh, maybe in June, somewhere. We need to get back the female and back play in the local league and so forth. So as I said, small steps, but it have a place. We need the females and play. You understand? There's an avenue for there. We can give them that opportunity to, to progress in and get. Can you have live load out of you can make money out the, the female can make serious money, you know, if they can play well, they go to Europe. Even in America, you can you can have a live load out of it. But formula, formula um, touch formula touched on sorry, um Finish there, finish off there. Come on, go to, go to. I'll talk after you. 
um sorry i um interrupted one of you guys one minute touched on something that is like this is why sometimes it's just great to have him on because he just says stuff stuff that i don't have to say myself <laughs> he touched on something that's so key there um in regards to safeguarding and i actually want to echo what he said in regards to safeguarding for women's football given what we have seen towards and without bringing up the conversation because i know some of you are diehard fans of um certain um persons given what we see towards the latter stage of um last year where the women's team is concerned it's safe to say that the jamaica football federation have safeguarding issues there where women where their women's team is concerned um unless they want to speak and defend that but given what we know it's safe to say that you've got some safeguarding issues there or you, you don't safeguarding i should say safeguarding isn't high on your priority so when 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 formula is saying that step you, you you would question whether or not they can manage the task on hand he's absolutely right because he's given us the federation have given us a reason to question their safeguarding ability definitely where the women's team is concerned i don't know where about the men's team but safeguarding for women is definitely um there's a question mark there for sure but something i wanted to say talking like how because i was just i just googled it to see how many of the top teams in this region has a league and most of the top teams in this region has a league Say that again, Malik. I didn't. I didn't quite hear you say that again. I think Malik freeze. I think, I, think I, freeze. I lost him there for a second. But yeah, I think I think you're right. Um, formula. Um, Crystal, you do, do me a favor, please, and highlight this comment. Which one? Phantom. Sorry to cut you, but we need to kind of Phantom. Kinda Phantom. Yeah, the very last comment. Sorry oh. to cut you, but we need okay. to address this safety and security of our female footballers is an integral part of women's football phantom come on come on phantom we don't need for we don't need for you know expound on that that is a part of it that is a part of of of, of the women's game it's an important aspect very important probably the most important aspect of women's games they don't want to be putting jamaican women's footballers in uncomfortable situations the jff made a blunder in my humble opinion when they hired the the the, the, the previous coach right i mean i don't know what's taking place with that particular investigation whether the allegations are true or not we don't know but the mere fact that these allegations were made by multiple women against this particular individual and the jff still right but to be fair to them enough, mm -hmm. but to be to, to be fair to them still you know, to mm -hmm. be fair to them they they have they have they have do the necessary um what I want the word I want to find. They do, they do the necessary. They, they went and do the necessary checks and balance in terms of ensuring that temporary they put they 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 remove him from the position that he had. So to be but clear, I, I, I think what 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 formula is saying is before he, they did a recruitment and this is why the spotlight is on the, the jff um particularly when the allegation came about the first question that people are asking is did the federation do the due diligence check did you do your due diligence checks given that and due diligence check has to be done of every coach that manages young women every coach that manages women every age group not just women boys every, every the same thing that can be accused or um, accused where the, where, the, where the women's team is concerned. You can have said accusation where the men's team is concerned. So once you're dealing with, um, say, students of the game from any gender, due diligence checks has to be carried out. So you need to know their background. You need to know where they're coming from. Oh, for, God, for, for all we know, you could go ahead and unintentionally recruit a murderer 
what do you have to say for yourself then if you go and accidentally recruit a murderer? Due diligence check is an absolute must when you're working with students of the game from a particular age group. Absolute must. So that's why I'm saying um, um, formula is hit the nail on the head there. You have to look at the federation and say, did you even do due, due diligence check? Did you do safeguarding checks to make sure that he is the man for the job? It's not just about saying his CV is impressive. Yes, but what is he like in his personal life? You have to check it before the person is put into their, their position. You have to do a background check. Even with me at work, I've been at my workplace for God knows how long. And just the other day, I had to do another due diligence check just to check if my record is clean. And I'm laughing. I'm thinking, you know me, but they're right. We do it. Ever so often we check if our record is clean. I might do something in my personal life and I didn't tell my line manager. I'm trying to keep it a secret, but you, you do your due, 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 due diligence check, especially when you know you're going to be working with students of the game. But Brain, I said Brain put a comment, formula beliefs in the court of public opinion. Common sense accusation happened to anyone, including you. Formula gave out sentencing already. I don't think you understand what I'm saying, Brain. What I am saying is that the accusations against Busby were not investigated. They were not investigated. Right? The club that Busby was at was accused of ignoring the complaints by the young woman. So when you have a situation like that where a number of young women have made accusations disturbing accusations against a coach and to go ahead right those as those in those accusations were not investigated it's not like they were investigated and busby was acquitted or found of no wrongdoing that is not what happened they were not they were brushed to the side and jff still went and hired this man either they knew and they didn't care or they did not know and they were wrong for not knowing can't be hiring the man and you don't you don't do your due diligence to not even not check with the hr for see what is the key let like, me not understand that Oof. and and I, I have to say as well um i have to say as well that it's the same that goes with the with the with the men's team doesn't matter as long as you're working with a certain age group, you have to do your due diligence check. And that's not something that we're going to sit and dispute against. It's a must. It's an absolute must. You have to know who you're recruiting. You could be recruiting a robber, a thief or a, or a murderer. You don't know. You have to have to absolutely do your due diligence check. It's like Coach Karoom in there. I'm sure even he looks like he works in a school. I'm sure his school place didn't just recruit him like that. You can't just pick up any odd person off the street, dare I say, and say, there you go, there's your job. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So I think Formula made a solid, solid point. And it's refreshing. As a woman, it's refreshing to hear another a, a young man i should say similar ages to myself speak like that because this so is young <laughs> <laughs> it's great young to hear young, young, buddy, young buddy young young buddy <laughs> you know given what is true given the culture because you know coach karumi touched on something quite key there in the jamaican culture where scamming is concerned jamaica have another culture and that culture is rape and child molestation it's a shameful culture, but it's, it's part of our culture. So for me as a woman, it's great to hear a man, a young man, actually speak so openly and say, you I know what, that. you I shouldn't. Yeah, we have, we have a scamming can't, culture. Can't go on like it now. We can't hide it. We have a scamming culture, and Jamaica also have a rape and child molestation culture. So given the society that we live in, shame on the Federation for not doing due diligence check. And that goes for any coach that walks through the system to coach the men's team or the women's team. I, can't, I don't care, even if you're just the, 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 the kit person, do diligence check. Because you could be a pedophile. It's as simple as the kit man, the person who's rolling out the pitch, watering the garden, do diligence check. It's as simple as that. You don't even know. This person who could potentially um, be causing harm to the men's team or the women's team, how you know he's not inserting cameras hidden cameras spying on the men's team spying on the women's team people are crafty and disturbing that's the way we have to look at things so i'm sorry federation you're going to keep on getting a hammering because again 
there's a lot of slackness there that we in the 12th man we're not going to be settling for it on 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 this occasion and also for the foreseeable future back over to you guys i want to i want to finish off by saying that I, I have to make a move now but it was a joy being here and as we're family, I say that the rest of the world, we have to, we have to, we have to take care of the ladies. We have to take care of the young men. We have to be careful who bring around the the, 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 the young ladies and the young men because it's serious time, and it's been serious time a long time. But we have to, we have to, we have to take care of them. And as a father, and as a parent, and as a guardian. I always try to encourage us as coaches to be leaders and lead by lead by example by doing the right thing. You understand? And we have to just protect them. So I'm leaving now. I I like the show. I you can't tell I'm I'm saying this to I'm not shy now, but sometimes I just <laughs> <laughs> I no, know. I know. I, but I love what you're doing. And Thank keep you. doing what you're doing. And Richard, keep being yourself. You understand? So it's joy being here. Fabula, Malik. So big up on yourself. More life. Prosperity. Thank you, Coach. By the way, Stay before, travel you go, before you Respect go, Coach. Um, Respect, Coach. Before you go, Coach, I'm wishing you all the best, boss. Yeah, man. Give a thanks. Protection. Yeah. Respect, Coach Kurume. Yeah, he's great. He's great having him on the show. Great having yeah. him on the show and being yeah. so honest and frank and yeah. And I just wanted to show. um finish saying what I was saying before I had get uh, cut off the show because I was getting a, a call. But um, I was saying so I was looking in the top and the only three teams in the Concord that are top three teams that do not have a league right now is Jamaica, Canada, and Haiti. Those are the only top three teams that do not have a, a league right now, which I feel is kind of surprising for all the rest of the league, I mean, all the rest of the team to have leagues to develop their young talent and to be building their players and a lot of their players to have chemistry with each other. Because look at most of the American team, most of the American team play in the, the NWS era, the National Women's Soccer League here in America. So a lot of the players get time to play amongst each other. I think um, Canada won. I think the list might need a little bit of a tweak in there, um, Malik. I don't know if they when was the last time they updated it, but... Um, Canada has got a they've got a League One where the women's team is concerned. Uh, yeah, that's that's where Jameson plays, but that one is relatively new. Like he hasn't okay. even the new season. Like the season there is kicking off. I think next month, June between June or July. So it's literally this is 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 new over there in in Canada. So I think that list needs to be up um upgraded. And then one more thing I wanted to touch on, which I was just talking about. Like about you know protecting the 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 the, the, the woman and do uh, be in the man team doing due diligence on who you hire. I think you know that goes for every sport right down the line because if especially like here in America because a lot of time in America you would be hearing like these college athletes may be getting touched and yeah. all of that. Why like after they, they like why they in the college they don't say it. If for some reason they wait till they come out of college instead of speaking out while they are at the college. So that man or that woman can't touch no more no more children or whatever because them people should not be in you know your workspace. No matter never if it's a sports, no matter what kind of job it is you could you could be a janitor you don't want someone working beside you like that because you could never know when that day becomes your day where they try to touch you or you know anything 100 percent, 100 percent. but no i'm um, formula thank you so much. honest to god like 
it's it's just powerful to hear you um bring that up and yeah it means a lot it means a lot uh, not just for women because the same allegations can happen to men as well like women and young girls aren't the only one that can be you know touched inappropriately it can happen to boys as well so if there are any like young boys out there that's listening I'm, I'm sure they would have taken like great confidence on what you've said because it's a serious subject it's not like we're sat here just talking for the sake of views it's it's a serious subject that's deeply deeply um affects our community and it's probably affected our community for um centuries if we're being honest it's not something that's just new i mean nowadays i remember last year you guys probably remember this just about every day that we go on social media the newspaper talking about another girl going missing and you start to get worried you start to fear what's going to happen to her and so on so it's just refreshing to hear, like I said, a, a young man, not even a man who is like mature in age, like fine wine, a young man actually like to speak like that. So a big up to yourself and um, my um, panelists as well. And uh, Mr. Mr. Mills and Mr. Um, Stevens and um, crew me as well. Full respect. Full respect. Uh, so, uh, be, oh, my bad, Mr. Mills. One more thing. You know, if we do play the American the American team, right? We do have a secret rapper who can tell us how to stop. Um, which uh Dennis Rodman daughter first name or whatever her first name is, but tell us how to stop Dennis Rodman daughter. Do you know who that 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 secret weapon is? Is it gonna be your president? No, it's <laughs> it's our um, Mrs. Snyder. Is that her name? Mrs. Yes. Yes, yes. She Did Yes, they both play for the Washington Spirit. So, <laughs> Sydney, Miss Miss Snyder can be is our secret weapon and can tell us how to stop Miss Rodman if we have to play Miss Rodman. That's true. That is true. That is definitely true. Um, guys, we are steadily approaching like the final step here. Um of the live stream sorry we went off a little bit off topic but i think it actually ties in beautifully in our conversation i want to hear from my panelists and also guys in the comment section i want to hear you guys' thoughts on um the mentality what do you make of the mentality um of the reggae girls and the culture as well um from last month's last last window which was back in february and also to the present No, I mean, just utmost professionalism as usual. Um, and, and just a business-like kind of mentality, you know, knowing what's at stake. And I think they are secretly on a mission of, of trying to really and truly establish the women's game in Jamaica. I think they realize that they, 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 you know, they have a very important and a major role to play, right, in growing the women's game in, in, in Jamaica. The more success the, 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 the women's national team has, is the more inspiration it will provide to other young ladies, you know, who are, who are you, you have a lot of women in the country who are fans of football, you know, right? I remember I did an internship a uh, number of years ago, it was I think it was the FSC, Financial Services Commission, that did the internship at, and there were some women in the division, and they were very informed about football, and you know, constantly talking about football and stuff like that. So, I, I think there are a lot of women in the country who are very, you know, passionate about the game who probably never previously had the inspiration to, to, to play the game. And there are young girls coming up who might be very passionate about the game as well, who will definitely be inspired by the likes of a Bonisha, the likes of a Swaby, the likes of a McCoy, etc., etc. So, yeah, I, I think the girls realise that this is not only about the success of the national team, and the women's team achieving its full potential, the current team or the current cup of players, but also, you know, just basically improving the game on a whole in the country. It's a good shot. It's a good shot. I can see a comment by uh, 
Tennessee Crystal Formula Malik. I can see a, a comment uh, regarding the popularity of the reggae girls. It's a an, it's a it's a paid comment. Very interesting. I think that the women have learned from the last window. I think um, under Vin, uh, they've spot. also had That's increased. They've where had is increased. It? Uh, uh, it's um. Oh, okay. Um, thank yeah. you, um, Tennessee. I didn't spot that. Um, thank you, um, Richard. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, maybe I can piggy bank off off that comment. Do you want to read it out, Crystal? Go, go for ahead. it. Yeah, go for it. Okay. No. Well, formula. Um, it says um, formula. I don't think it's about the league. I think we are a wagonist people in the last World Cup qualifiers. I saw a packed stadium in Haiti for the first round, and they don't have a league. Formula. But Tennessee, I agree. I never said, I said it's one of the reasons. It is a number of reasons, Tennessee. And I agree with you as well that the Waganis kind of um, thing is there as well, too. Waganis for the team and also Waganis for the sport and a whole. Women's football isn't, the popularity is growing, but it's nowhere near the men's game. And I think when women football eventually explodes, to be as big as the men's game, I think that's when you will see the wagonist mentality of a number of the Jamaicans coming um, to play. So, yeah, I agree with the Tennessee. I, I, it's not only the league alone. There's a number of other variables. I agree. Formula, do you, do you think, and can you envisage a time sooner, I hope, than later, when the reggae girls are eager uh, to come on board social platforms such as Talawa TV, um, IMAX it, uh, Coach's Desk uh, and, and, and shows such as yours where they can actually be interviewed and we can get um, much more of an insight into the girls. Do you think logistically that is a goer and would that increase the popularity? Sometimes when I hear the likes of uh, Asha uh, uh, give interviews and I hear them, their accents, um, Molo Sweatman, their, their accents... Um, maybe seen by some as uh, not quite exotic, uh, but the fact that they're not broadly speaking um, patois um, could be seen as something that it's... Um, it, it, when you hear from them and you hear the stories and where they're coming from, their connection to Jamaica, uh, where they're coming from in their club game, talking about the game at large, would that bring a more greater connection and thirst for the game and then encourage people to... Um, um, come to stadiums and raise the profile of the reggae girls because um, I think there's so much potential there. And uh, if the JFF aren't um, jumping um, at opportunities, uh, maybe it's for social vloggers uh, and YouTubers to play their part. Rephrase the question again for me, um, please, um, Richard. Now, I was saying, do you, do you think for the... <laughs> Do you think that in the immediate future and long-term future, um, social platform uh, can um, play a part, social media can play a part in welcoming uh, the, the, the reggae girls? And hopefully the reggae girls, uh, with the full support of the JFF, can actually encourage uh, the, the, the players to, to um, gain more social exposure. And hopefully that would encourage corporate um, entities to, to, to get involved because... I think there are certain missed opportunities. They're, they are such a, 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 a breath of fresh air. But when I hear the accents, when I hear some of the players talking, I wonder if there's a, a for certain people, a kind of a standoffish feel that they feel, oh, when well, maybe these these players are too uh, intelligent, they're too broad-minded, they're not locally born, they're not yard. I, I don't know, but there's so many opportunities. But I'm wondering now, I've taken to them like a Dr. Water, but I wonder if certain people with the lack of a local league is formula was alluding to maybe um there, there's um more opportunities that need to, could be taken to bring that connectivity um between the fans and the players i loved at the end of the game uh last night seeing the the the, the players um over at the edges of um sabina park signing autographs and, and and shirts being exchanged and the smiles it was fantastic that was some of the best scenes um i've seen for a long time and i i'm just really um bubbly and enthusiastic for the future of, of the reggae girls. But just wondering why um, that Just to add on, on to, to what yeah. you've said, um, mm. 
I, I don't from from I've been watching the reggae girls. I don't think I've ever come across anyone who has an issue or has picked up on their accents because people pick up on accents everywhere. People in in Saint Elizabeth sound different from people in Saint Thomas. That's an accent. So for me, I would be blown away if anyone in Jamaica raised the point of saying the accent is an issue or they're not connecting with the girls because of the accent. Because it's just like people in Jamaica have an accent. Parish to parish, they have an accent. How people in country and how people in Kingston talk, completely different accent. So me, me personally, I've never heard anyone pick up on that. In terms of them being Intel too intelligent, I would then say to the to the to the host of that platform, then maybe you need to go up, upskill yourself because if you're threatened by someone's intelligence, then you shouldn't be leading your ship. Maybe speak to somebody who is on the same level of skill set as yourself. Um, but no, I don't think anyone can say to the girls that you know your accent doesn't make you um, Jamaican or whatever. Look, I have people. <laughs> I have people in in <laughs> in my circle who live in Jamaica who speak like they're from foreign and they've never been on a plane before. And I don't look at them and think, why are you talking like that? But me, I laugh. Sometimes I call them and I hear an accent. And I just say, no, I'm so call you back. I'm going to laugh. Because I said, what a brother, you talk like this, man. I've never got on a plane yet. But... <laughs> So, so for me, that's the way I see it. But I've never, I've never heard anyone pick up on the girl's accent and say because you have an accent, then you're not connected. I think that the interesting one that I'm keen on, going back to what Formula said with the league, this is a big pull for me in terms of what um the gaff of Vin Blaine has said because he has said that he's keen to reintegrate um quote and unquote uh, Jamaican born players. So he wants to see if he can help to um create a system where players don't have to feel as if, you know, I don't make it into the national team unless I'm playing overseas. So he wants to make it feasible for women women's football to kickstart in Jamaica with the hopes of saying if you are good enough, you will play with the with the um senior side. And you can see that that's something that he believes in because he's he's calling on his crop of his core players. His core players are like Jody Brown, um Khadija Shah. I'm pretty sure if, if Den Den um was available to play, Den Den would be playing for Jamaica. Likewise, same goes for Kanya Plummer. So I think that he would re rely on his core group of players as it spans his core group of players that he's used to are Jamaican born players who coincidentally now their accents have changed because they're now living overseas. So if anybody was to raise that point, I would be like, it's it's so far fetched. Like I, I don't understand why anyone would um would think like that. I don't know I if think, you guys in the comment section of the panel. I, th I think what Richard is trying to say, I think what Richard is trying to say, right? is that because there is a certain segment of the population that isn't a fan of overseas born players representing Jamaica, I think what he's trying to ask is if the mere fact that, you know, so many of the players in the Reggae Girls team, you know, were not born in Jamaica, I think what he's trying to ask is if that will present a problem going forward. I think that's... A, I think that's that's what you're trying to ask, right, Richard? Yeah. Um, so if it, it, yeah, or if yeah, it's, it, that, that that's exactly part of it. And I want if if that's a, a consideration or a factor, because I I see so many positives, but that's from me, my perspective. I I think it's great, but maybe some people see things differently. I just, just no, I, I mean, so many opportunities I mean, for the reggae girls to to be um um even more stars. They're very humble, intelligent, likable positive um, brand of football, willing to learn. Uh, there's so many good things, and I, I, I just think it's a, a upward curves and anything we can do, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm up for it, for, for it. But go ahead, Formula and Crystal. But that's the reason why it's called um, shared perspective. So you're saying I don't necessarily think, you know, people are going to have a different in opinions at the end of the day. That's why it's called shared perspectives. Um, just to understand how people look at things. Um, not we're not all going to have the same opinions. That's why conversations um have to be had. Um, obviously in in a respectful way. So um, I don't want you to like sit there and be like 
you know, should I have asked that question? Um, no, um, the, the title of tonight's show is Shared Perspectives. So it's interesting to see how you might see things or how you may think others might see things. But um, in terms yeah. of getting that balance right, I think if, if, if people are new to the, to, the, to the Reggae Girls team, they have to go back and look at the Reggae Girls squad from the last cycle and see that there was a balance there. You're not going to get any serious team that wants to taste greatness and say we're just relying on homegrown talent. If that was the case, Jamaica wouldn't even have qualified, wouldn't have been involved in round one of the women's CONCACAF qualifiers because there is no league. So the only players you have on the pitch, stand up on the pitch, is Jody Brown at present and Khadija. Two players, you'd even have subs as Jamaican born players. So you know and, and Trudy and uh, Sashana. And, and Trudy and Sashana. Four it. players. I mean, so you you for, for me the the, the 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 thing is if they are good enough to play, they should play. But you still have to like make sure that that balance is right in terms of authenticity. Do they connect well with their culture? Do they know about their heritage and so on? But I don't think anyone, especially where the women's, this is what I'm saying that the women's team. But sorry to cut you, Crystal, but that's a good point. The, the girl, I think that's another thing. The girls, just to keep it short, not to interrupt, but the girls seem to be very connected to the heritage and the culture. Thank you. They, they Thank dance you. in certain dance moves and they sing the in food. certain songs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That this is just what I'm saying. Um, and I'm glad you said that formula because this is what I'm saying. People can't look at what the men's team do and compare it to the women's team because the women's team, these girls are in touch with their culture. Yes, some of them might be born overseas, but they 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 they're buying into the culture, so they're eating the Jamaican food. Like Formula said, they're dancing. You can tell this isn't forced. You can tell that it's not forced. You can see that they're they're really like diving into their culture. So. The the love in the anthem. There you go. The, I'll let you take it away, Formula, because like we speak the same language, anyways. Formula, but sorry, I, formula. Sorry, I'm not want disrespect you. Know. You are articulating it so beautifully. No, no, you didn't. I don't want disrespect your formula people. Sorry. <laughs> but I want to. I want to say something that I've seen in a fortune cookie today that I got for the Chinese carryout. It says, your hard work will soften the troubles of others. So the JFF troubles is like, you know, getting the fans and the, play and, the and everybody to, to buy into the team. So Crystal, Richards, me, and Formula are doing all the hard work, the heavy lifting to try to get the fans and everyone to buy into the team. So the JFF really just, it's like they say, I feel like they kind of saying, well, you know what? We never really want to do all the hard work because no matter what we do, the people on YouTube going to come out and bash us. So we just going to let them do all the heavy lifting. We just going to sit right there and just reap the benefits. That's my opinion on how I feel the JFF is looking at the situation. Wow. I want to. Wow. Wow. Formula. Wow. Malik. Oh. You know, you might, you, hey, that might give me the odd sleepless night, you know, if, if there's any, if there were any, <laughs> if there was any truth in what you just said, Malik. Uh, Speechless. The, the reason Bosch would be speechless because uh, formula coming, coming. Now, I, I just wanted to say something as well about the, the, the previous comment about the, the amount of foreign born players in the team, right? In the camp. That's something that I actually worry about in terms of as more people start to get, as women's football starts to rise and more people starts to come on board, right? I worry if it will stay the same because no, I think a lot of the individuals who are gravitating towards women's football first are not really those who have an issue with the amount of foreign born players that would be in the reggae girls program, but I worry about that going forward 
if these reggae girls will be welcomed as much as they are being welcomed now, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, you know, will they continue to be welcomed as much as they are being welcomed? Because I just, I just worry that as the sport begins to grow, you know, more people begin to come on board and and also i think as the sport begins to grow more politics as well would start to, to to come into play a lot of politics is is ruining 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 jamaica's men's football because and the politics come into play because there's a lot of power there's a lot of power because there's either a lot of money or potentially a lot of money to be made and I think that as women's footballers start to command heftier price tags, you know, and uh, the, the, the women's league comes off the ground, right? Will we start to hear those individuals involved in local football who are now starting to say how our girls are not being given a chance, you know, why so much foreign born players are in the team? And whatever, whatever. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of the the, the the footballing sector in Jamaica's football, they are very, I don't want to say nationalistic, but they, 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 a lot of them have that perspective. And I don't even think it's ideological in, in nature. I think it's more, more of an eater, food of the national program in nature. You know, they want the national team to market their respective players, right? So, you know, when these players make transfers, they make money, right? It's about, you know, monetary gains and, you know, the power comes about where there's a, a tussle, right? For for those, for, you know, for that slice of the pie, so to speak, or that slice of the cake. So I worry about women's football, that this same, you know, welcoming of the girls so to speak as the sport begins to blossom and explode right you know the, the dollar signs that are there to be made from women's football becomes more apparent to individuals in jamaica right will especially the local footballing fraternity will they have an issue and will more as the more supporters come on board with those supporters you know the more diverse the support becomes will they have an issue also with so many you know foreign born players coming on board Lord, how can i say sensitive to topic formula tread lightly and carefully why i need to tread lightly <laughs> explain that light why would i need to tread um like is he talking about the, the i think he's talking about the, the selling of of players and shop windowing those players in the national team. thing is what people that. need to remember is once there is respect which i think formula is done once there is respect one doesn't necessarily have to tread lightly tread lightly probably have to tread lightly if you're being disrespectful but i think when you're being respectful as formula and the rest of the guys on the panel have been so far um i don't really think anyone can say that he's being disrespectful but see where um lloyd o'connor is coming from though Selling and shopping, and that him say it to like that kind of. The other thing I think that him talk about. <laughs> yes, we need to talk about this comment as well, you know. Like, the gaffer brought on Kayla McCoy, and on a number of plays, she was playing as a number six. But yet still, Drew Spence was on the bench. I Have you not know. heard Formula? And what, what you know what? I so was gonna basically, draw, I, was basically gonna, I was gonna draw his attention to you know and ask his opinion but this is a cla crystal this is a classic situation that we've got here look at that if formula wasn't aware crystal take it away because this is exactly <laughs> the kind of thing that oh my good you couldn't make it up crystal break it to him i'm gonna watch his response go ahead wow so, ba so basically i'm glad you asked that so you know how we've been doing the live watch along and we've seen that drew spence has been on the bench on two occasions for Cayman Islands and for um, Dominican Republic. So um, so we're there wondering why isn't the gaffer bringing in 
uh, Drew Spence, particularly last night, where we look a little bit unstable in defence. So I asked him in the press conference, you know, paraphrasing what was the thought process. And he looked a little bit confused. And the response that he gave to me was that um, I could actually play the response if you want. I don't know if you want me to go ahead and play the response. Um, and I... You, <laughs> Basically, he looked confused as to why Drew Spence's name was on the team sheet that we saw. Because basically, her name was not supposed to be on the team sheet because she's not eligible to play for Jamaica. I heard the rumor, but I didn't know how true it was considering the fact that her name was on the team sheet. So There's I did rub. hear it, you know. I There's heard it, you know. But I'm saying to myself, is this true though it, it make it kind of makes sense because she's not playing and it kind of can't really wrap her head around why she's not playing but it don't make sense because she's on the damn team sheet so i did hear it but i didn't know what to make of it but okay that that clarification is good i'll see if i can get it um to play for you um formula so i'm going to see if i can load up uh vin blaine's response so you can hear the response because there's probably a few people in the comment section that haven't heard um the gaffer's response so just give me like 30 seconds to try and find that for you but it just goes back to what we were saying between myself and richard and this is why i said um you know kindly ask mr stevens if we could just talk about this because so many people think about it guys formula as a blogger that follows the regular girls is asking, completely unaware that Drew Spence isn't eligible to play for Jamaica. A mistake as such puts the puts the coach's head on the chopping board. There is literally people there wanting to chop off Vin Blaine's head for not putting um, Drew Spence into the team. Lo and behold, she's not eligible, and the gaffer doesn't even know that she's on the team sheet that the rest of us is seeing. So let me but go ahead and find that for you. I, 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 well, I dropped a video earlier today. I wanted to drop it way earlier than I did, but I had some issues. I always have issues. But, um, yeah, my light did go, Jaja, and it was out for hours. But, um, so, you know, the light affect the internet. Can't get the internet. Um, but, yeah, I dropped the video. <laughs> I dropped the video, and that was one of the things I was asking in the video in terms of what is the scenario with Drew Spence, right? And I did say that I heard this excuse or this reason as to why she didn't feature, but, and we need to hear it from Vin Blaine, but I never heard it, so. I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna play it for you. Please. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you can just give me a nod or a thumbs up if you can hear it, cause I'm gonna just basically not say anything um, for the next couple of minutes. Um, Christy, thanks for having me on the show. I'm gonna go charge up my phone. Thanks for having me on the show today. Okay, Mr. Mills. Um, hope you enjoyed your Chinese, and I'll, I'll see you on another live stream. And thank you Full for respect. listening to your time. Okay. Good to see you, Malik. Good to see you, man. Take Full care, respect. Sir. Take care, big man. The uh, witching hour. All right. All right. Remember to hit the like, share, and subscribe. This has been quality conversation. I'm gonna be re-watching this show crystal because it's been <laughs> full full of gems full of thank gems you. so thank you in advance hit that like share and subscribe get the visibility of Telewa tv and this particular show out if you've not hit it already and a warm welcome to warren webster father of imaxi and father of jamaican football uh viewership full respect to you warren our thoughts are still with you thanks for commenting jermaine miller respect remain fresh god ever bless but all yours when they hear this press conference. Have you got it ready for us, Crystal? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening there, um, Coach. Congratulations on another victory. Just backtracking on what you said there in terms of that um, midfield stability there and staying together. What was the thought process of starting Drew Spence on the bench? Well, well, well Drew, Drew is not sure. Um, no, Drew is not. I should have made, made that clear yesterday, Crystal. She's not ready yet. She's not ready yet. She's not a part of the squad today. Uh, we are still looking about um, some documents for outstanding. Um, she'll be ready for, for, um, for the next camp and also um, July. She and Jade, Jade Bailey. 
So is is that just um a confusion there in terms of um logistically? Was there a confusion because she was in she was on the bench there, so that's the reason why we were a little bit confused as to why she didn't make any um appearance. Yeah, no. If, if that is, if you notice me on the bench, she didn't have a well uniform. She just had a, a regular, a regular um, house um, attire. Okay, then. Thank you. Um, I have two more questions. So that was the response, and I was gonna probe him a bit. But wasn't she on the team sheet, though, Crystal? Um, in, in terms of, hold on. Let me look at the the the, the JFF post because I'm almost sure on the JFF post. <laughs> That's that's why I, that's why I was gonna probe him again because I'm thinking you're completely unaware of what we're seeing on social media. So I'm asking him, it probably doesn't even make sense to him. He's probably thinking, why am I asking him this? But Spence is on the bench, like she's on the bench. That's and what the, I'm the saying. JFF thing. It says subs. It says subs. Um, Snyder, Jameson, Samson, Douglas, Spence, Bailey, Gale. Adam, yo, my name is Naga Shadi, you know, who we all know and love. Um, Adam Alokan. You're, you're a better man than me, Richard. Um, it's a blessing. It's a fundamental man, thing you are, you are talk about. It's a <laughs> fundamental thing, which is, She's it's only... left you shocked. It's left us shocked. And that's the, that's the ironic thing. We were talking about um, Jamaica, the Jamaican administration. Sometimes it's a smaller things attention to detail could be that could be the difference between us thriving against the likes of america and canada mexico going forward when we have these little matters sorted out because the isms and schisms the um speculation can abound the negativity can abound uh, and, and conjecture abounds when we have dynamics like this she's on the subs bench according to the paperwork but the reality was she was not an official sub at best what she was there is as a as a as, as the reggae girls are such a tight unit and they appreciate drew spence she was on the bench but not in the kit ready to be disrobed and to go out onto the pitch in the jamaican reggae girls colors she was there and it says at best as camaraderie the fact that she's there with her experience her knowledge her know-how the feel-good factor thumbs up we love that yet more positivity where the reggae girls themselves are concerned it's the administrative situation that comes into question and causes potentially ill feeling and we want change going forward we want pride in performance to be at the the forefront of the jff's activities karumi was pointing to it earlier taking pride it's more we not the i and the me we if we love the reggae girls if we love football if we love doing things well and we want to do well let us do well and seek to because none, none of us are perfect let's be crystal clear none of us are perfect we're not going to be throwing stones in glass houses but this is something that we should see it call it out and going forward, ensure that it does not happen again if we can help it. Speak! Someone, yes, some, some, someone in the comment section is saying, um, let it go formula, it was a mistake. I'm just going to say that. But the thing is, yes, you're right, it is a mistake. But dealing, bearing in mind that we're dealing with incompetence, what we're trying to do here is root out that incompetence because... A mistake, a small mistake, is going to be turned into another mistake. And there's two mistakes that they've made. Because they made the mistakes for the Cayman Island by putting her on the bench. He then made another mistake by putting her on the bench for the Dominican Republic game. So what we're seeing here is a mistake. And because nobody's roping you in, you change that into a habit. Your habit then turns into a pattern of behavior. Your pattern of behavior can cause consequence. The consequence here is the manager is being looked at as in he has favoritism. People are saying that the reason why Drew Spence didn't play is because you don't like Drew Spence. So yes, it is a mistake, but it's a costly mistake. It's a mistake that can pretty much turn the 12th man against the manager. And that's the reason why we're not going to stop talking about it until they correct the mistake. That's it. It's simple. Very simple. I'll pass it back over to you guys. Crystal, 
Yeah, he, yo, Crystal, what is wrong with your Crystal? You keep on hitting the nail on the damn head, man. What is wrong with your Crystal? Quality hammer. Quality <laughs> hammer. Yo, look, I, I don't have an issue with people making mistakes, right? I don't. But the mistake was made twice, right? But we're all human. We make mistakes. The problem is the JFF keeps on making mistakes. All the time they're making mistakes. Every single life, but we're tired of the mistakes. It's just a pattern of incompetence, a pattern of mistakes, a pattern of errors. Why them cannot even get the simple, simple little things like the, the names in a match squad? Them cannot even get something as simple as that right. Are we surprised when they have massive logistical errors? If them cannot even get something simple as that correct, it's a pattern, you know. It, this is not an isolated incident. This is a pattern. And Crystal hit the nail on the head when she talked about the possible consequences. Suppose Crystal, you know, wasn't the, 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 the amazing, learned, you know, reggae girls journalist that she was and didn't ask the, 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 the questions that needed to be asked. Everybody would see the gaffe of Vin Blaine as being an incompetent manager. We all know the role that we all know the role that the 12th man's opinion can have as to the sustainability and even the enjoyability of a, a, a manager's role. The 12th man has gotten coaches fired. Mm. And it, when, when, when you have errors like that, that, you know, makes it seem as if the gaffer, the gaffer is incompetent. Favoritism. For playing these kind of allegations. For bringing, exactly. For bringing on a forward when you have a number six on the bench. Them kind of things that will, will, as a matter of fact, it goes even deeper than that. It's decisions like that that can turn off people from supporting the regular girls because they must say, yo, we not support the regular girls, them not going away because the coach now no sense and the coach are this and the coach are that. It is something simple like that because it's just because vlogging has really taught me to be very careful and, 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 and you know, the word, the word is eluding me right now, but just very cautious in my approach to dealing with certain topics. That's why I said in my video, we need answers from Vin Blaine as to what is taking place with um, Drew Spence as to why she didn't play. Is it a case him don't like or what is the case? You know, right. I didn't even see that video, but I'm glad you did it. I'm glad because I, I, I want Vin Blaine to actually watch your video and go and have a word with the Federation. No, it's because to the walls. Exactly. Because Crystal is like me prior to being a vlogger and just being a fan would be like, yo, Vin Blaine this, Vin Blaine that, Vin Blaine have no sense. That's what I would have done even in my earlier vlogging days when me just start my channel and jump on YouTube. Me that it blast Vin Blaine. Me that did black, yo, that brother, you away, but do him not have no damn sense. Not even common footballing sense him not have. That's what I would have, now I've matured. I say, you know, can't really speak on it because, you know, we, we need clarification. So I, have a, I would approach it more maturely. Right? But it's little things like this that can have a massive ripple effect. It can cause fans to be disengaged and disenfranchised. Just like how people literally weren't watching the reggae boys because they must say, boy, Tapa now bring this side gun nowhere. Why the sense we even support this? I mean, no, it's a train wreck about for happening. Crystal hit the damn nail on the head, man. You need to stop it, Crystal. Jesus, man. <laughs> no, but it's true because even I, at one point, I was like, "What? what's the gaffer doing? Like, why are you not bringing on Drew Spence? I'm looking at her name. Why are you not bringing? And you know what? I saw a picture circulating on social media, and this is our joker for federation it is. We've got Drew Spence, 
there was one picture, I'm not sure if she did it throughout the whole game, she was sat with the media, as in the Jamaican media, right? And I'm thinking that's nowhere near the bench. So in that moment, you should have gone on social media and actually said, correction, Drew Spence is not able, able to play tonight. Cover your manager's back cover your manage unless it's the case of you're setting him up for failure which i wouldn't put it past the federation is it a case that you want to turn people on his turn people on him so that you can usher someone else in his position if that's the case fair play you almost got away with it but i'm telling the federation that you're living in social media day and age where there's several different eyes on you you cannot pull certain stunts that you could have pulled many years ago many moons ago you can't do it no more because people are analytical people have got their eyes and ears glued all over the game i don't know if they thought maybe it's because it's women's football so they can get away with it that's even worse the women's football team of jamaica is loved more than the men's team maybe if you did it to the men's team we probably wouldn't have noticed but it's the women's team that you're dealing with they, they, they are the sweetheart of jamaican football you can't do certain stuff because you will be flagged for it it's as plain as, and I'm so glad that Formula did that video, and I'm praying that um, the gaffer comes across your video so that you can actually have a word of the Federation say, look, that can't happen again. That cannot happen again. Jones Spence in the house again. Jones Spence, JFF should get their house in order. You're in Jones you. uh, you, you're Formula. Ah, uh, you, you, you're done. No, Where's you Joan? How come I can't see her comment? You, you don't see what she just said? I say no more. Richard, the voice aren't you a married man, Richard? You are <laughs> Jones Spence. Aren't you a married man? <laughs> I wanna, I wanna uh, put a face to the name of. Does anyone met John Spence? I've not met John Spence. Does anyone know John Spence? Heard. I don't know. Well, you can picture her through her words, and the words are spot yes, on. beautiful. We know, oh, we know, yes. Richard. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. We know. John John Spence is lovely. I'm sure she's beautiful. <laughs> um, you know, I get. I, 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 me personally, I like to be fair. I like to be fair. So I'm just kind of beat the JFF hard a while, like that, right? And and they deserve it. They deserve it. When them the fool finish, them deserve it. So as I said, it's a pattern, right? I want to make it absolutely clear. I appreciate the effort that the JFF is putting out to improve. The fact of the matter is, we're, we're here complaining about the social media posts. In all fairness, Two years ago, we have never, we would not, as a matter of a couple, a couple of months ago, we would have never even have seen <laughs> that social media post. It would not have existed. It would not have taken place. My goodness. Right? So, to, yeah, to, so to be fair to the JFF, you know what? Because I don't want it to seem as if we as fans and we as vloggers are ungrateful and not appreciative of the effort that they are putting. To be fair, we see the improvements. It's visible to the naked eye. So we, we have, I personally feel a sense of responsibility to be fair to them. But the reason why we continue to beat them is because they still have some ways to go. So yes, there is improvement, but they still have some ways to go. It cannot be... The, the, I mean, even right throughout the reggae boy, I know, Chris, sorry, I, don't, I know Crystal don't like... No, man, don't. Do, do your thing, do your but, thing. But even during the Reggae Boys campaign, we cannot ignore the fact that while things were better and it wasn't as disastrous as men know the Saudi Arabia trip or the, the other disastrous issues that took place before. But even during the campaign, there were administrative issues that negatively impacted the campaign. Right? Mikel Antonio missed an entire window. And, and, and other arms also take place. We have not seen them all regret to this day. And other arms also take place. There were mistakes that, you know, they did a decent job sweeping it under the carpet and hiding it. And I guess we want, we all were trying to focus on the football as well. But these, the, 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 I'll never forget when Dalton Wimps did an interview on Sportsman. Dalton Formula, Wimps, Formula. I, Formula, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. I'm going to make a cup of tea and I'm advising you no. Please advise. Crystal, you too. Please advise and issue a warning notice. Advise, a parental advisory notice. 
you you there's trauma involved in what you might say you know so please i'm asking you to just give a, a friendly warning to the viewers and subscribers we want them to hit the like and share button but you are in dangerous traumatic territory now sir we can see the the the, the, the papers fluttering around sir literally and metaphorically i warn you now a copper crystal your usual yes please you know how i like it uh, <laughs> richard <laughs> gonna go get gone for the tea um no it, it, it's just just remembering you know an interview with dalton wind where maria ramnarak i think i've pronounced her name right asked him a question after the saudi arabia tour did the administrative issues affect the performance in the first game in Saudi Arabia? Where, if you remember that game, we got 3 0. <laughs> Things were kind of a bit all over the place. And even he, you know, had to just admit in the interview that yes, the issues leading up to the, 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 the game or the tour, you know, had an unfeel had unfeel repercussions. So we, we, we can't forget that it is not, we're not only here running remote just to beat the JFF. Like right? there are real issues. It's, it's, it's real, it affects down to the performances on the pitch. Remember, you know, I like what you just said there, um, uh, Formula, but let me bring up what, um, big up yourself, Mr. Webster. I hear what you're saying we're not necessarily focusing on that we're focusing on what's been said on social media through the official jamaica football federation account because remember the first list that they gave the journalist drew's name wasn't on it then randomly drew's name was on it so then we're well, thinking is she in is she out yeah and then they put her name on the squad list yeah but it's not vin we're beating though warren yeah, we're not saying nothing bad about um no it's not vin is the issue him. is the is the jff yes. right the mere yeah, fact yeah. that even in the in the social media post that shows drew spence on the match day squad on the bench yep you know that's an issue put when it this way the lineup they see her there as well exactly it's like warren warren is a um tottenham supporter Imagine if Antonio Conte put Harry Kane on the bench and Harry Kane wasn't eligible to play because he was capped for that competition. You'd be thinking, what on earth is going on here with, with, with Conte? I've never seen nothing like that at any level of football, be it club or international, where you put a player on a bench that's not eligible to play. You could have given that position to someone else then, literally. But you chose somebody who's not even eligible to play. I don't know if they did it because they wanted to make up the numbers. But then it goes to show that you really do think we're stupid. And and yo, I didn't yo. That's a good point as well, to you know, Crystal, because I it's mean, a blunder. Is it, is Formula. Is it, think about it, Tina. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Before we went into the game yeah. against Cayman Islands, remember who was leading the group? Dominican Republic. That game against Dominican Republic last night was a block. Buster, the difference in that could have been say the scoreline wasn't what it was until up until they scored the, the the equalizer actually after they scored when they scored the equalizer the difference leading up to that moment first 20 minute of the game was we clearly needed midfield stability we clearly needed midfield stability so can you imagine if it didn't go the other way we would have been saying why didn't you bring in drew or better yet why didn't you get a per a player to fill drew's position who was eligible to play so it's a complete blunder and and that's what i'm wondering is this a is this another ravel gold cup scenario where ravel was on the, the, the gold cup squad <laughs> thing on and eventually i mean we play the tournament a man shot in the squad is this another scenario like like what exactly happened here was because i mean drew spence was a part of the squad she was a part of the squad did they bring her in in the hope that by the time men and the damn game came around she'd have gotten the clearance at men and know. with these i mean you never know with me i have no issue with um drew spence being in the in the spinning around the team there's no issues with that but you don't put her on the 
team sheet for as the bench. You don't do or that. In the official squad. She was in the official squad. That's what I'm saying. There's no, there's no, even if they wanted to play smart and say, you know, we're going to put you in the official squad just in case you get the paper rack sorted out, fair play. But if you knew before kickoff that she, her paperwork was not sorted out, why on earth are you putting her on the bench? She's not supposed to be named on the bench because it's not only Drew Spence, it's not only the gaffer that people would question. Some people are a little bit, um, <laughs> Some people have different in opinion. So someone might even say that does Drew Spent not want to be capped by Jamaica? Because some people will be saying that. So not only are you posing a problem for the gaffer, but you're also posing a problem for the player as well. Her name should not never have been on the bench, be it for the Cayman Islands game or be it for the Dominican Republic game. So there definitely needs to be better lines of communication between your 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 gaffer, Mr. Vin Blaine, and the person who is in charge of formulating those graphic designs for social media. And JFF, you should be overlooking your so it's coming out from your official account. So we're going by what you're showing us. We're not going by what nobody else is showing us. We're going by what you're showing us because it's you guys that give us the, the lineup, the starting eleven and the bench for match days. So I, I, I really don't understand. Um quickly though, I wanted to address this comment from earlier, but I didn't get a chance to address it. Where is it? Um Brain Drain had made a comment. It's you probably can't find it now. I don't know if I can Brain find it. Drain Drain. It wasn't his last comment. Um, it was it's a good way up in the chat. Good what was it about? Let's see if I can find it. Brain drain. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I can't find it. I can't find it. But I think I know. Is it something to do with popular? No man, no man, no man, no man. No, man. <laughs> it's not that. Um it's brain not drain. That. Brain drain. Oh, I found it. I found it. Okay. Formula said Busby was accused by multiple people. I'm reviewing the case. Who are these multiple? All right. Let me explain. All right. Break it down real simple for brain drain. All right. Brain, what took place is that the initial story was broken by The Guardian. Massive platform, international platform, very credible platform. Now, the story that they broke was about an, a, a particular, surrounding a particular individual, right, who made a, an allegation against Busby, right? But in the piece that The Guardian um, wrote as well, they had alluded to investigations that they had done, right, that showed that multiple uh, allegations by multiple girls at Vancouver was also made against Busby. So even though the, the, the story only surrounded one person, the Guardian made reference to the fact that their investigation showed that multiple multiple other multiple allegations were made to the human resource department at Vancouver against Busby by multiple women. So just to clarify. Right. I, I hope that's helped to um summarize um what we have um touched on so far. Hopefully there's no confusion there. If you guys want a bit more clarity, you're more than welcome to ask us. I've got about um not too long um left. I've got Mr. Richard Stevens um brewing his tea for us. Um Hope he comes back with the right accuracy because I'm a bit fussy when it comes to my tea making. Um, but <laughs> interesting on what the guys are saying in the uh, comment section. Um, let's see. Brain, that is not what the article said. That is not what the article said. I, I will look back at the article again, Brain, but I actually covered that particular story and did a video on it. That is not <laughs> what the article says. So, yeah, I, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say brain is wrong, but that is not how. That's not my recollection of of the, the of the of the article. So I, I don't remember. That I mean, you don't necessarily have to go back because he was suspended for said reasons. 
So <laughs> even if you guys read different um, articles, there was an allegation there, and due to the allegation, uh, he was suspended, um, be it until further notice or whatever the Federation um, decides to do, but there was an allegation there um, for certain. You drink the tea already, boss? No, sir. You can't. You can't uh, box down hot tea, sir. So fast. No, no, no. Yes, sir. You are shut right yes, by sir. my oh, side, sir. Militant now, rich. Now, <laughs> right by my side. Now, whenever I see, come here, say yo. <laughs> hot tea, Richard. Richard, box down that quick and fast, man. <laughs> No, not at all, not at all. Crystal, it's all there for you when you're when you're ready. You Thank have you, done sir. an outstanding stint over the last week, so a couple of the least you deserve, and it's all there. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't know if Formula is doing any streaming. Uh, I don't think I'm back tomorrow, guys, just to give you a heads up. I don't think I'm, I might be back on Good Friday to see if we can have a Good Friday, but that would just be a great chat. You need, a, you need rest, Crystal. You need rest. I you know. Been sleeping much. I know you haven't been sleeping much. And if you want me to hop on your channel tomorrow, um, I can I hop said, on your channel Crystal, tomorrow. Crystal, you need rest, Crystal. And I'm going to say it again. If you want me to hop on your channel tomorrow, <laughs> let me know. And I'll hop on your channel tomorrow because that's the plan. I'm not going to do nothing on my channel. So if you want me to hop on your channel tomorrow, I it can. It depends. It depends. Only if you're available. I'm available so we can do something on your channel. Hold tomorrow. on, hold on, hold on. Not so fast. Not so fast. <laughs> um, so... Are you available before six six o'clock your time would be midday my time, right? Six o'clock, yeah, yeah. Six o'clock is good for me. And it and it would it would definitely not be a long stream because it doesn't matter, I'm free. Six o'clock is good for me. I said Crystal, you need to get some rest. Six o'clock yeah. is good. It's, it's I, I was thinking I was thinking about um doing a, a a review of the round from yeah, I like a that. perspective. I like that. I like so, that. Yeah. We can talk though, I um, in private. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I'm down for that. So guys, I'm not gonna be on my channel tomorrow, six PM UK. I'll be over on Formulas channel doing a um review of the round one there with the women's <laughs> CONCACOF qualifiers or concerns so you can join me in formulas challenge i'll promote it on my channel as well just to give you guys a gentle reminder and um on friday like i said i might come back on here on friday just to have a little good friday chat with you guys so nothing ask me whatever treat it as a q a if you want we don't we can talk about anything reggae girls reggae boys club football you name it just light-hearted conversation there and then obviously i'll be back over the weekend as well wonderful is this is this the right time to ask i was wondering if you were going to take this off air you know we're still live i, I like the way that you guys are so easy that you're you're chewing over the fast <laughs> who's going to be on what at what time lovely uh, formula uh, uh crystal is it too early to to give a a marks out of 10 for the qualifying campaign um recently successfully included by the reggae girls what was your summation of uh the group i'm going to be reflecting and looking forward to the review of the rounders of the rounds and the qualification rounds indeed because i've only had a chance to have a a fairly good look but there's much more to see of the likes of panama and trinidad and tobago haiti uh looked a very interesting team i'm, I'm looking forward to uh seeing how they actually um uh tackled this campaign including that drubbing that drubbing of the British on Virgin Island. Wait a minute, she's laughing. Wait a minute. Wait. Warren. I'm in mean, the comic center section, you know. Warren. Wait a Wait a minute, that dangerous man, which are <laughs> they I take pride I take pride in the size of my mug. Let me see the cow. Let me see the mug again. I do. I do take pride. This is a. a, a it's a special mug, and um, I've got a big mug. Trust me, it's a big mug. It's a. It's, it's a, a big, big mug. mug. It's a. Big that mug. is a big man mug. Yeah, a big oh, man mug. 
Oh, yeah, man, Ross. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's a big man. Yes, sir. And a boy, and a boy mug that in a rich other. Big man mug. <laughs> big man alone can drink out of that. Cool, no, man. <laughs> big man mug. I love that. <laughs> You're no mug, Formula Sports. You are no mug. You are a doyen of football. By the way, may I just uh, salute you for your commentary and coverage of the Jamaica v. Dominican Republic game. I was having a look during the first half. I know that I piped him in a couple of comments um, as you were providing the commentary. I like your analytical style uh, and the delivery. Good good painting of pictures during, during that game. So more power to you. And the combination of yourself, absolutely. The combination of yourself and Crystal uh, reviewing will be mouth-watering and Reason Boss can give a, a ringing endorsement of the quality <laughs> that that show will undoubtedly bring. Have you been satisfied with the Reggae Girls campaign thus far? Would you say, yep, job well done, more to come? Underwhelming, overwhelming, or steady um, as she goes? It's a good question there, Mr. Stevens. Definitely satisfied. I think we've gotten better um, game by game. A little bit frustrate, frustration there in the February um, window. Um, but the most important thing is we didn't lose four wins in four. Football is a results game and they're giving us the results um, game by game. Bermuda was a little bit uncomfortable. Um, four, the, the four line, the score line doesn't re reflect the game itself. Grenada. They pose a frustration as well with their game in-game tactics. Credits hats off to them for disrupting our rhythm. Um, Cayman Islands um, felt like a training session, but um, that's no disrespect to them. Um, and then last night, last night we saw we were sat here watching a little bit hands in mouth at time, particularly when they netted the equalizer um, because we know of their qualities. So I think like i said you know game by game we've gotten better um there is still work there to be done which i'm happy to say i'm happy to say that there's work there to be done because for me that just means that you're only going to get better and that's a beautiful thing um so yeah work there to be done but i am i am pleased with what i've seen so far and we, we did what we needed to do the mission was to get past round one um the gaffer said that he would do it <laughs> when he was just appointed and a lot of people were looking at thinking this is a madman that's talking but he was he spoke with confidence with his team he said we're going to do it he said that his team is superior to dominica and that player for player quote and unquote paraphrasing were basically levels above and he proved that last night so that it's, it's odd that the only thing that i'm complaining about is nothing to do with the coaching staff it's nothing to do with the players it's literally jff that's um they could have caused damage to our round one and thankfully they they um haven't we managed to get get, get away with it but if this was um the championship and not the qualifiers then maybe we'll be sat here um with less smiles and more smoke coming out of our ears so i'm, I'm fairly pleased with what i've seen so far what about yourself I've been quietly impressed. I think there is room for improvement. Looking at the comment section, though, um, there, are, there, are, there are commenters who may have seen more of the reggae girls and, and have a, a, a wider perspective on what the reggae girls can bring or maybe what they've heard, um, the reputation of the reggae girls proceeding. I'm not sure of the, of the balance in terms of opinions. But personally, I've seen them when they've played. I can see the athleticism. Mm -hmm. I see the pace of the likes of jo Jody, Jody, um, Jody Brown. Um, you know, a lot of pace. Um, she may not let, may not be the quickest, but she's one of the quickest um, around. Um, just the fact that she's willing to use that pace to stretch um, opposing defenders, um, challenge them. They've got to be, you know, on the money. Um, she showed great control in executing that goal, the opening goal against the Dominican Republic, and she's a bubbly character, full of um, self confidence, which is very important um at the highest um level of sport khadija show um by common consent not in uh the the, the greatest of form 
um, by her high standards, but still, nonetheless, by common consent, she's recognised as being one of the leading players, not only for Jamaica but in in the the Concacaf, which is a ring, excuse me, which is a ringing endorsement. Uh, Trudy Carter, I hear that she's really flourishing under Vin uh, Blaine's uh, leadership uh, and, and coaching regime. So that's great to see because from what I've seen of her, she's a terrific uh, player with the X factor. Um, I was watching the commentary of our, on Coach's Desk and Formula Sports and when she made a particular move that we made mention of in the game, um, both uh, 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 Coach's Desk and Formula um, piped up in that moment when she did something in midfield and the final ball um, was tried to play through, but it didn't find find um, Khadija or any of the other reggae girls. But that moment of electricity and movement in the midfield was just an another testimony to the fact that she's um, she's got a lot of ability. Not and she was playing in the midfield at that time, but um, she's also showed that she's got her goal scoring boots on. So I'm really greatly encouraged by the reggae girls in in, in general. But when it comes up to the 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 better opponents, what I'm looking for now is to see. Do they raise their game? Can they raise their game? I'm confident they can, but Vin will now be again under the spotlight. What I'm happy about is that he's willing to test his skills and back his players to execute the tactics that he's referring to. He's talking about um, the, the issues in midfield with Marlo Sweatman and looking to um, you know shore up the midfield, play the wide game, using the like of um, Paige uh, uh, Bailey Gale, and Tiffany Cameron, sport for choice there, and seeing how they play and how they perform. And there's more in the tank where, where, where Jamaica is concerned. And they will have to step up another level because Haiti, very good team. Panama, good team. But I think Jamaica can mix it. And I'm looking forward to the challenge because you can only get better by playing against better teams. And I have no fear that they um, can rise to the challenge and compete effectively. I'm really going to be looking forward to how... The tactics play out because against the the, the better quality teams, uh, you know, you snooze and you lose. And if you're not up to scratch, but that's what it's about. If you want to make the, the biggest stage of all, the World Cup, you're going to have to meet and beat some of the best. And CONCACAF currently contains some of the best. So, you know, these reggae girls, they've got the temperament. They've got the hunger, the desire. Um, so I'm going to interestedly watch and see uh, if they rise to the 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 challenge jff admin wise please rise to the challenge too formula full respect crystal what have, what have you made of it any anything to add to that i'm gonna sip my tea and it's a good no topic. i think you've um pretty much just um added on to what i said earlier on um i don't think i have anything left to add on to what you've said it's just a case of <laughs> Sure. You lot in the comment section, you, you do keep our show going. I don't think you realize. Intro you know. boss, man. Intro <laughs> boss. <laughs> you guys are funny, but um, <laughs> yeah. Over to you, Mister Formula. No, I think I think what I saw in this particular um campaign thus far is a team with tremendous potential and a lot of promise. However, there are a number of things that do need to be ironed out. I still think that we need one. Of, I mean, for starters, we need defensive reinforcements, right? The squad depth where, def, you know, good defense is concerned is, you know, a little, leaves a little to be desired. And we, we know we, we have some names coming back as well, you know, um, that um, should be, you know, coming back in our defense. Um, by the way, Ban Flowers was out because of a injury. An injury or something like that. Yeah. So that it would have been nice to have, I don't know, probably it's our responsibility as that you know, I think and again I've said it to the JFF, I've said it before and I will say it again. I think that then they need to involve the, the vloggers more in the press conferences. In terms of why is only certain people from certain um, platforms are being notified of the press conferences, you know, um, we need to we need to be involved because I think we follow these teams more, 
And uh, I mean, I've heard people say the vloggers ask the best questions. Right, we, we have our finger on the pulse of what, you know, of what the, exactly the issues are, right? Because I would have asked in that pre press conference, I mean, credit to, 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 to Dominic for saying it on our Instagram, but suppose it didn't occur to her to make the post. And I don't even think she made it to inform us. I just think she was just saying, you know, just because of this damn injury, I can't be there to be a part of it. And I don't think it was really to inform us. I think she was just, you know, it sounded a bit like she was a little bit frustrated, so to speak. But yeah, I would have asked that question: Why is Bon Flowers not here? You know, and what is the situation with Drew? But yeah, so I think you know. Sorry to go off on a tangent, but yeah, the, the, the campaign showed us a lot of promise, but there are still some things to be ironed out. Still, some key pieces that I think we need to to you know I'll, I'll probably another pivot player with more mobility than marlo that can do a similar job to marlo um probably an additional number six even though i'm i think um um samson from charlton a charlton athletic samson play for now um she's also a defensive midfielder as well so i, I guess i guess that answers that question but i don't know there's still some pieces to the puzzle the puzzle is missing a few pieces and some issues that need to be ironed out i think for me personally i would love for us to scout a second bonisha <laughs> a player who can even if she doesn't do it as well as bonnie a player that can play well with her back to goal the forwards that we have they are very good forwards kayla mccoy is a very good forward but these are players that, you know, the forwards that we have are more inclined to be playing, facing the goal, right? That, you know, it, it's, it's not their game to be playing with their back to goal. And so to ask them to do a similar role to Bonnie, one, they don't have the physical attributes to do it. And two, you're taking them out of their comfort zone. And I think Bonnie and the type of player that she is, is such a key piece to the puzzle for the, 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 the regular girls. And I think we need a similar type of player who, if Bonnie is not available for whatever reason, we need a similar type of player who can come in and do a similar type of job, even if it's not as good as Bonnie, but at least that type of player. But there are some, the goalkeeping department don't have any issues with that, that's solid. One and two pieces to come in the defense. We're looking forward to seeing those. And probably we, we need a left back or two as well. I don't think we have issues with the right back per se once you have everybody back. But the left back is a position that needs to be sorted out. Um, a pivot player to Havana to come as well. And yeah, so, but, and, and in terms of the performance, it definitely needs improvement against the better teams. You know, we saw a glimpse of what they can do against Cayman, right? But we need to be more consistent. The performance against the Damrep was not the best. It was not the best, right? The regular girls can play better than that. And, and what upsets me, not upsets me, but what kind of disappoints me of that performance is that for me personally, I think the main issue with the performance was the passing. I think the quality of the passing was poor. There were too many misplaced passes. And I think a lot of attacks broke down because of that. And I think if it wasn't for those misplaced passes, I would know the girls, I mean, it was just an off day with passing. We know the girls can improve where that is concerned. But if it wasn't for that, I think we could have run over the dam right. I think we really could have run over the damn right. Most of the goals that were scored were long balls. We don't want to be reminded of the reggae boys. So we really appreciate it if the girls continue to score goals with good build-up play and not necessarily some good long balls and, and not to be fair, 
it's not really like what the reggae boys were doing because a lot of the long balls from the reggae boys was just aimless. Get the ball out of the danger area anyway. We'll do. We need to get it's it different. out of here now. Yeah, different, it's different. different. It's more, yeah, yeah it's more Amen. planned and more strategic. Molo Sweatman, strategic. she's a fantastic, yeah, yeah fantastic delivery. Strategic. Molo Sweatman, yeah, man, she strategic. can pull it onto a dime with um Khadija yeah. show. So it's used but, um sporadically, yeah, yeah. Mixed but with it's still, it, it still, it still would be more kind of, um comforting if we could see the reggae girls playing against top quality opposition and really putting the ball on the ground. And scoring goals with with I don't want to say proper build up play with, but with more I don't want to say attractive build up play either. But Penetration. With, yeah, just breaking the lines with 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 passing, short mm -hmm. passing. It, it's really a sign of strength. So just breaking the lines with short passing rather than you know that big long ball, albeit a strategic long ball. That would have seen the girls get a couple of goals with last night. I understand where you're coming from. I'm looking forward to seeing. There were some players that I've not uh, seen as yet. The likes of um, uh, Paige, Paige Bailey, I believe it is, of Blackwood. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the likes of these players come in. I was looking in the comment section uh, for the qualify for the second phase. I think Warren Webster was asking. Good question. Is it a case of one one is just one game? It's not a home and away situation. Is it going to be similar to? Well, it's not home. It's all in. It's all in Mexico, isn't it? So, it's going to be just one game. Is that right? So, if it's two groups of four, does that mean three games played, or will it be? Will they be meeting each other twice? On no, right? man. It's, it's one game. From what I understand, it's a group. It's a group phase scenario. Um, two groups of four, three games, the top two automatically qualify. Ja Eddie yeah. said this one sound like him have a perfect team for J. <laughs> yeah, I you mean, see that. You see that. So you don't talk, fact, you know. I don't think you're of, you're suggesting that. The fact of the matter is that against better opposition, look, Damrep is a decent team to be fair. And we yes. were the better team. We were the better team, right? But against the real giants of CONCACAF that we're going to face up in the next round, I don't want to see the reggae girls play Haiti right now. Me no want to see that. Right? I don't want to see the reggae girls play the USA right now. Me no Was, it six love? Was it Cuba? Was it Cuba? Haiti gave six love? And Cuba is a decent team and Haiti Egg. ran over them. Exactly. Exactly. That was an eye-opener. I'm going to watch the rest Cuba of their, their a, games. Cuba is a respectable team in CONCACAF in the, on the women's side of things. Put them right? to the sword. Put them to the sword. Mm. So, we... So, brain... No, Dejan, I can't agree with that. I can't... Brain drain Vin is not good enough for the next round. Look, yes, I know that the, the, the team... For some of the games, look like they needed a little bit of double D forty, but I'm not going to blame it on Vin Blaine because I see what Vin Blaine is trying to do. I just think the girls haven't quite consistently ironed out the execution on the pitch. Can you they tell us what, what Vin's trying to do? Can you tell us what Vin's trying to do? Because I'm picking up some of the comments about Vin as well. Mm. To be fair, he's taking a lot of these things on the chin. I saw him on this and that TV, and he said. As a manager, you're gonna have to come in for criticism. One, one moment, guys. Down. Just give me one moment. I'll be back. One second. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. No problem. The very best managers. You can be the best manager in the world, and you can still come in for criticism. Klopp um, came in for criticism. Pep comes in for criticism. So it's fascinating. But can you tell us what Vin Vin is plan? What is his plan as far as you see formula, and um, how can we be sure that the the, the women are, are capable of carrying out? Um, those instructions and are they winning instructions? No, but you, you you see the patterns of play, you see the patterns of movement, you see the tactics, you see the the roles and the functions. You see that he wants to play expansive football. You see that he wants to play on the front foot. You see the high pressing. You see the counter pressing. You see that he wants to play with a certain kind of intensity, right? 
you, 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 you see the patterns of play involving the, the center backs um, involvement in the build up play, right? In terms of the midfield movement, you know, creating gaps in the middle of the park in terms of the midfield of the opposition team has to track those midfield runs by a Marl or, or an Asha, and that creates space for the likes of a Swaby to step up in midfield. And well, for both Swabies, especially Allison, and her passing is top notch. Her passing and distribution out from the back is top notch. And you see her stepping into the midfield, making that 15, 20 yard pass to a tucked in winger like a Tiffany Cameron playing in the half space, dropping into the pocket, receiving the ball in the half space in front of the fullback. And you see the link up play that they're trying to do to break the respective lines, the little give and goes, the one, twos, et cetera, et cetera. Like there, yeah, yeah, there are a number of patterns of play. When Tapa, this is why I don't like when people make the, the comparison to Tapa, right? When Tapa was playing little teams, when Tapa was playing the Arubas in Nations League and all of that, you never really saw the patterns of play, uh -oh. to be fair. You never really saw the patterns of movement, right? All you saw was a team that was superior to the other team, right? When you see the reggae girls playing with, you know, against the likes of a Grenada, against the likes of a Dam Rep, against the likes of, yes, lesser opposition, but you don't only see the deficit between the two teams. You see the patterns of play. You see the patterns of movement. You see what Vin is trying to do. You see what he's trying to do with that pattern of play with Campbell and Asha to try and break the midfield line. You see the pattern of play with the two centre backs, right, linking the play between the back line and the forward line. You see it, right? It's just that the execution, and I'm not saying, look, I'm not saying Vin Blaine is the next Pep Guardiola. I'm not saying that, right? But... You, 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 you see a system. You see the system. You see the system. Right? I just don't think the girls have really, you know, managed to consistently execute it. And I can't put that on Vin. In yesterday's game, the passing was poor from the reggae girls. Now, we know they can do better, but for whatever reason... Marlow was having an off game with passing. Asha off game with passing. Um, Sashanya, Chantel, um, Tyranny, they were having off games with, with, with passing. You cannot put so because so somebody said in my comment section yesterday, I think it was Marcus um Mosaya Garvey, <laughs> you know, back from the dead, asked in my comment section, formula. You know, you see the style of play, you see the system. Basically, he's saying he doesn't see it. And I'm saying you don't really see it consistently, not because of Vin Blaine, but because the execution just hasn't... I don't know if probably the team needs to be a bit more settled, play more with each other. I don't know. But we know the quality of the girls. The girls just have to go out there and execute. But you see what Vin is trying to do. You see the counter-pressing every time they lose the ball. Right, sometimes double teams immediately trying to win that back the ball within a 10 15 second time span in dangerous positions. You see it. So, when people say they don't win, there's no system and that, uh, like, I can't agree with that because if you really know this thing, and I'm not saying I really know it, I, I, I do a little bit of research, try to understand the game, right. But if you, if you have some insight into this thing, you see what he's trying to do. The execution, though, needs to improve. And that's where, against better opposition in the next round, the reggae girls are going to have to step up. We can't do what we did against, you know, constantly turning over in the ball in the middle of the park with Asha and with Marlo. That cannot work in the next round, right? Okay. We can neutralize the transitional game of dumb rep so that it didn't hurt us that badly. And fair play to the girls. From a defensive standpoint, they did reasonably well, right? The defense held up reasonably well and they were organized. 
right? But that amount of pressure being gifted to the opposition team in the next round by constantly turning over the ball in, in I wouldn't say dangerous areas, but in areas of concern that can hurt us, that can work in the next round. Against better opposition, that amount of pressure can work against better teams with better attacks. But uh, the confidence I have is that we know the quality of the girls, we know the levels that they play at, right? I mean, these girls, a number of them have played at a very high... I mean, Chantel is playing for Rangers. Alison has played for Roma, right? We have seen Chantel's passing ability out from the back in previous games. So this particular game is just a number of the girls were having an off game due to passing issues. I don't know why all of them all of a sudden had these issues. I don't know if it's the pitch. I don't know what it is. To be fair, the passing accuracy of both teams were very low. So I don't know if it's the pitch. But it never really looks so. It just that like the passing was just poor from the regular girls. Simple five-yard passes going out of bounds and all of those things. So I can't agree with people taking out the belt, the be the belt to swing it at Vin Blaine because the performance against Damrep was a bit disjointed. That's not on Vin. The girls need to improve and, and play to their what we know they can do and play to their, their abilities. And that's that, that's just how I see it. Can I ask you a question about um there's King King Judas has made a comment in the uh comment section that it's hard to play good football um on a not so good pitch going forward. Are you confident that better pitches, fingers crossed, um, the, the, the pitches in Mexico will be better pitches? Do you envisage and are you confident that the reggae girls will actually uh, welcome better quality pitches? And will that be a distinct advantage to the better quality teams? Or do you think there could be a potential leveling up of uh, certain performances? Uh, with better surfaces, so the likes of Haiti, I don't know what their, their home surfaces are like, Panama uh, and such like, Trinidad and Tobago, but with smoother pitches, we may be relying more on quality coming to the fore. Would that put the reggae girls in a better position from the get-go? Well, all the games will be played in Mexico. So, and Mexican pitches, from what I know, are, 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 are good quality. But as I said, the pitch in the pitch in Cayman was not the best, and the passing was far better. Marlo was hitting them on a dime, right? Alice was hitting them on a dime. You know, the passing was so. I don't. I don't necessarily think. And the only game that I've seen so far where the passing was an issue was was last night's game. For whatever reason, the girls just had a bad game where that is concerned. Thankfully, the damn rep didn't capitalize on that but for whatever reason the I, I don't know what I can't I can't sit here and try to answer that question because yes the football will out I mean we know on better surfaces the football will be more attractive that's facts right it would roll a lot smoother roll a lot quicker etc etc but I wouldn't put the poor passing in last night's game down to the pitch if memory serves me right in the first half, the passing was 76% accuracy. That's bad. The game it, it like ended, the, the game it ended 79%. But the reason why it raised was because in the second half, the substitutes were passing the ball better. Douglas, Chantel's replacement, her passes were connecting. Right? So the, the, you know, um Samson as well, I think, replaced, was playing alongside. In the in the pivots, I think anyway, yeah. But the part the substitutes, their passing was better. So could we really even say it's the pitch then? Because the substitutes were connecting. But the the, the, the starters, the passing was just off. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. It's gonna be a an appetizing uh affair. Vin. Are you surprised? As I said, you I think you know more about Vin than, than me formula. Uh are you surprised at um <laughs> I smile when I see this the Vin Moore? I'm seeing a few comments, um, aka Vin Moore coming through. Why is Vin's 
uh, tactical managerial acumen coming under the radar so much? Does it seem to be held in the greatest of respect? Is that fair criticism or is it just about right? Uh, uh, it's just, it's just, it boils back down to people don't have a, a positive, um, people don't see locally born and bred coaches in a glowing light. But, you know, they don't think that local coaches have proven themselves at a high enough level, right, or even have the necessary qualifications to, to coach at the international level. And to be honest with you, it is changing now. You do have some bright young minds coming through. But it, 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 there's still a lot left to be desired where the coaching ability and the coaching knowledge is concerned. Right? So I, I think that's just where it, it boils down. And to be fair, Vin himself, you know, many would not have been admirers of his last stint. You know, and and as head coach, and again, you know, I guess their criticism is that he's not an international internationally acclaimed coach. It's not like a Winfred Schaefer who had come to coach Jamaica, having won the African Cup of Nations and that sort of stuff. You know, they don't have any proven pedigree, so to speak. So, you know, it's kind of understandable in some sense. It'd be very interesting. Um, as I said, going into the second qualifier, this is part one of the mission. Um, successfully accomplished. Uh, should the Jamaican reggae girls be aiming to top the tables, whichever group they come in, or at least finishing second? Should they even be considering and speaking, uh, putting it out there for the fans that um, qualification for the World Cup? Uh, is the main aim, even if it's a case of by any means necessary, including. Uh, finishing third in the group and going into a, a playoff. That route could be, it's there, it's on the table. Top two, guaranteed you're in. Third places, you've got that um, divisional playoff uh, option. What is the message that you feel should be being conveyed to the watching fans, armchair and those fans who will be um, in the stadium? Well, it, it all depends on the group we get placed in, right? If we get placed in a tough group with three other of the the, the, the more difficult teams. So let's say we get placed in a group like with the US, with um, Mexico and who knows, Haiti or Panama. I'd much rather to have a group with like for instance canada and trinidad and tobago and costa rica <laughs> you know so it depends on on, on how the, the the group is 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 set out um topping the group will be very difficult regardless of what kind of group it is one group has canada the other group has the us so topping the group with those two teams will be will not be an easy task if we get placed in a canadian group in the group with Canada, I wouldn't put it past us if we iron out the, 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 the creases, so to speak, and get the pieces that the one and two pieces to the puzzle that we need and we, the, you know, the, we get some double D farty in the machine. I wouldn't put it past us to top a group with Canada. It would be difficult and highly unlikely, highly unlikely. But I think we're a few pieces short and also I don't think we would be prepared enough going into that final round to be able to pull off something like that. Mm, I can see Damien for Mackenzie. Top their group for sure. Um, I don't know if that's tongue in cheek or if he's deadly serious. I mean, that's that's positive thinking. It's positive thinking. Uh, I've seen Canada. Extremely, extremely Extreme. positive thinking. Extremely. <laughs> His brother must not know about Canada and the US. 
that Canada is what the number six ranked team in the world, I think, and the US is the number one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so top in group. Think, think about, think about, think about us, think about Jamaica playing the numbers like the reggae boys playing the number six ranked team in the world. Who's the number six ranked team in the world now? Right? One of them top teams are like a Brazil or Argentina or one of them teams. I think about going up against that kind of quality. Spain or Germany. With, yeah. Like, I don't know exactly who the number six team, rank team in the world now is on the main side, but I definitely know it's one of the top teams for sure. Like, it's, it's a mammoth task to beat the number six rank team. And, and Canada really and truly is probably lower in the rankings than where they normally are. Because normally they're like top four or something. Like, this is a team that always gets to like the semifinals or even the finals of major world women's footballing events. So to, to be to, to top a group with Canada is definitely easier said than than, than done. <laughs> that's that's for sure. That's for sure, sure, sure. I wish us all the best though. I think look, we I think at the very least we'll make a, a inter continental playoffs if the group isn't too tough you know if the group is is a, is a group of deck then i would just wait and see how it plays out it would be very difficult right because costa rica panama haiti you know the us canada mexico these are teams that if we are not really uh you know on all cylinders firing you know, it's not going to be easy to beat them. It's, no. it's not. If we if we are on our cylinders firing and, you know, we don't get unlucky. We don't even need luck. We just need not to be unlucky. If we are on our cylinders firing, even in a group of debt, we could finish top two. But I still think we need one and two. The team needs one and two pieces. Right, there are one and two pieces that are missing from the team to be able to pull off something like that. <clears throat> world class players, world class players. How many did Jamaica have in this round? I love that. In this round, I'm looking forward um, to seeing some of the players that I've not seen in action, but in this round, the ones we've seen thus far. Um, mm -hmm. mark, mark my cards and views and subscribers. Um, those out there, hit the like button if you've not done so. I don't know how many out there now. Just tap that like button and and put in your comments. Who do you feel, if any, are world class reggae girl players? Mark my cards because we're going to be meeting some of the um creme de la creme in the Concacaf region. So it's going to be really good viewing. Formula. Bonnie Shaw, many that's a that's a a, a a name that many people would associate. Hi, Crystal, how are you? Sorry, guys. <laughs> Crystal, All well, I hope. Crystal, All well, I hope. Crystal, Crystal is 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 such a a a, a badass host that Crystal abandoned her panelists <laughs> on her own show. You, you have to be, you have to be, you have to be a, a real, you have to be a top host. To do something like that sorry guys i'm back now though my apologies but i i trusted you guys so i didn't i wasn't even listening i was just letting you go my computer was turned down i was like yeah they they got this so there's clear trust there <laughs> um, but, but yeah i think i mean khadija i like uh, alison uh, is alison world class um is, is Alison world class, Crystal? Would you say Alison is world class? To put things into context, so she went to Roma, AS yeah. Roma, when they literally created. And um, I'm not going to say her being the I am actually, I'm lying. I would like to say that um, Alison there played a uh, pivotal role in helping Roma to secure their first trophy. Um, <laughs> and I think that, you know, it. when you ask A.S. Roma about Alison Swaby, they have nothing but good things to say about her calmness, professional, composure at the back. Um, they always say that your your attack has to be as good as your defense if you want to win things. 
it's no point having a sexy attack and a donkey at the back. You know, there's no point having a there I say a Rolls Royce of a defense and a donkey at the back. It doesn't complement each other, so they have to be balanced. So I I would say that yeah, she's got um world class um qualities in her, and she is still young. I think she's like what 25 something like that. So there's room there for improvement. She's approaching like her peak years in terms of footballing years. Um, so yeah, she she's calm. And she did something no. to the game last night that I thought that's actually quite um humorous. What is that? So I, I don't know if you guys remembered when um when Chantel, for those of you who are wondering, Chantel is Alison Swabe, Alison Swabe, Chantel Swabe, yes, obviously sisters. So when Chantel um went down there and <laughs> the first player to go, go over to her was actually Rebecca Spencer. And for me, this kind of epitomized just how professional these girls are. Um, Rebecca Spencer went over to her, uh, obviously all concerned, then up step. Alison Swaby, she goes over to her, she looks down, she's like, you're all right? Okay, then back to the job. And she went back straight into her position. Like, I've got a job to do here. I've checked that my sister is okay. She's good. I'm going back to my job. And the rest of the players just positioned themselves in line. And I was like, wow, that just goes to show to you. Think about it, guys. That's her blood. That's on the floor. She did her due diligence, checked if she was all right, and was like, I'm not going to let my emotion get into play because we know that Alison and Chantel Swaby went off in the last um, window back in, back in February. This time round, she's probably thinking it could be more of the same, but at the end of the day, she's got her job to do. She did the big sister thing, going over and checking on her little sister, but then she was like, you know what? I still have a game of football to play. And I was like, you know what? Big up to yourself because some people probably be have having clouded judgment because at the end of the day, essentially, that's her baby sister. So you're probably thinking, is she going to be... This is why it just goes to show that women footballers aren't emotional. People need to stop thinking that we're, we're like emotional beings. We're not. That's a perfect example of a women footballer not being emotional. That's her sister at the end of the day. Sister, clearly, she needed to come off because she was subsequently replaced. Um, but I just thought that it was beautiful to see that she didn't let no emotions get in the way of her judgment. Um, her decision at that time was to, like I said, check on my sister and then get back to business. So yeah, um, I like that. And it's 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 a, it's a go ahead go ahead go ahead sir. There's something I, I was just saying to, just to finish answering Richard's question. Jody Brown is a world class talent. I think Jody Brown is a world class. Hundred percent. For, for you to for you to be named the best young player in Concacaf. Hundred percent. World class talent. Hundred percent. What What do you think of Rebecca? Rebecca Spencer. Rebecca Spencer. Because Spence? way ranker and, and goalkeepers like very good, good world class. Like what do you think of Spencer? I think world class is one of those words that um people like throw around. Perhaps like sometimes a bit too loosely. Um, but I think what she is is she's stable and confident. She she had a blinder there, but I think the whole team, I think that goal against us from Dominica Republic was coming. So I think even if Rebecca wasn't off her lines, I feel like they would have found a way to rattle our net, and they did because we, we we lacked a little bit of potency there in the middle of the park. Um, but I think that she just Rebecca brings... wasn't stopping that. Not even if she was on her line. It I'm was telling you, it's just like exactly. It was a world class shot. It was one of those goals that you can't really blame. Because it did. It did. It was moving. She it was moving. And it, it, about it. It was hit like a rocket, and it was moving, and it went straight into the pigeon, right into the V. Rebecca, I, like I don't care what she wants to say. If she wants to beat up on herself for that. That a fair business, but she could Couldn't not stop, that. stop yeah. that. No yeah. goalkeeper, not even a man goalkeeper could have stopped that. <laughs> Andre Blake couldn't stop that. <laughs> Menena asks Christ, Andre Blake couldn't stop that. Seriously. It's interesting because um that goal was just ridiculous. And it's funny because I think me, um, Richard Stevens, Mikey Ballin, um, perhaps Malik as well, and I think in formula, I think we spoke about. Dominica Republic and the threats that they possess. So we would we just kind of knew that you know what? Nobody's surprised that they they found the back of our net because they they had it in their chamber and they've proven it against us. Um 
So I think the interesting thing about Rebecca Spencer is um, coming in and she's keeping someone like Sidney Schneider on her toes. Sidney Schneider is not a joke keeper. She, this Sidney Schneider is not a joke keeper. That's a serious firepower there. That's a threat that we've got there in the in 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 goal in um Sydney Schneider. It's just for me, it's a matter of her getting more minutes at um club level because then that will help her to refine her form. Sydney Schneider was one of the most talked about players at the last Women's World Cup, not just for Jamaica but talked about players as in every single country, including Jamaica. So she's an but outstanding this, uh, keeper. She's a very, very young goalkeeper. Too. So even she, you could probably say, is a world-class prospect as well. Yeah, 100%. I will back story. you on that. I will back you on that. Yeah, she's to a 23, 22, 23. She's a young, young, young. Like 22. I don't think she's like older than 23. So for a goalkeeper, she has well over a decade left. Yeah, she's um um I don't think she's reached uh 23 yet, but I'm backing you on that. World class, world class, like Sydney Schneider. Sydney Schneider in her element, you're giving that the chef kiss. You're literally giving her performance the chef kiss, like beautiful goalkeeper to watch, flying here and there, sublime. I don't have a bad word to say about Sydney Schneider. And I, I, I just want her to refine her form. And when called upon, I want I want I want the confidence to be there. But you know, she's a goalkeeper. So essentially, more so than an outfield player, her confidence will come from playing games. Confidence is not going to come from sitting on the bench. So I'm just praying to God that when we knock on her door, I just hope that she's just um, able to just know that, have that confidence to do what you can do. Yes, at the moment, you're not starting um, like the last World Cup campaign, but she's still, she's still that girl. Like Sidney Schneider is still that girl. She's still classy, as you guys have um, quite rightly alluded to. Mm, I see Louis yeah, O'Connor's got um, yeah. Jody Brown, Asha. Asha and um, uh, I think Khadija. Uh, Asha so is three. a top player too, you know, and Asha is playing in a top league too. Yeah, yeah, she. Yeah, she's... forget that. We're spoiled. It's just magnificent. Like we're actually spoiled for choices. We're spoiled for talent. Like it's beautiful to see. Like we're where the women's team is concerned, we're just spoiled. Spoiled. No wonder so many people love to throw their little toys out their prams because you're a bunch of spoiled babies. That's what we are over here, like completely spoiled for talent and choices. But yeah, I love my team. Definitely love my team. You know, there was a point um that you 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 raised yesterday uh, in in the watch along, mm -hmm. uh, Crystal, which was which was um very interesting. Remember when we were talking about Anthony Grant, and, and I said Kayla McCoy made a move. I won't, I won't, I won't challenge you on that again, um, Mr. Richard Stevens. Oh, no, no, no problem at all. Okay, okay, no problem at all, no <laughs> problem at all. Just an interesting observation, but no problem at all. I was asked, but the original question I was asking Formula was how many world-class players mm -hmm. do Jamaica have? And and you're quite right, the, the, the whole discussion about the definition of world-class players, that's been for decades in the men's game, you know, what's the definition of a world class yeah. player? And I always yeah. find it fascinating because it's it's a term just like the word great players is used a little too loosely. I don't I don't in, engage in calling people great players on um, winning nearly some terrific players around over the over Richard. the years and currently, but fascinating. Yeah, yes, King King Formula. What we have definitely is a number of players that are playing at a very high higher level in the women's game. Sweden is the number two ranked women's team in the world. And we have what? Two or three reggae girls that are currently playing in the Swedish league. That's that's no joke. D that, like That's no joke. The Swedish league is no joke right um even like jameson even though she's not currently playing in sweden she has played in sweden right like we have reggae girls playing in the us um league we have reggae girls playing in the english top flight 
in the Swedish top flight, right? Bonnichard tore up France. Leon is like the Real Madrid of women's football. I know enough about women's football to know that Leon is is like the Real Madrid of women's football. <laughs> right? And Bonnichard was tearing up that league with yeah. that club. Right? So regardless of definition of world-class players being too narrow or too wide, it no matter. We have top, top players playing at top, top, top level. Cameron played in Germany. Right? Cameron played in Germany. Like, this is not a joke. This is not a joke thing. These are regular girls playing at a very, very high level. Full respect. Listen, I'm about to... Time is fast. Crystal, you've got a way of just um, allowing conversation to flow. And before you know it, it's the witching hour, <laughs> as Malik would say. I tell you, you you have got stamina. Unlike myself, I was catching, I was catching sleep this afternoon like God knows what. So, Richard, um, I owe you brunch. I literally owe I can't have brunch with formula until I'm in Jamaica again. But I definitely owe you brunch because you have just given me that added bit of boost. And Mr. M Mr. Mallet Mills, Mr. Um, Mikey Ballin, I owe you guys all brunch at some you point. And, you and Richard live near each other? Richard is like south, right, Richard? Correct, southwest London. Yeah. And you're east, east if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm east, so we're like on the opposite sides of London, but and it's... I am lost. I have no <laughs> idea what is East London and so that. You guys have not answered my question in a way that I can really okay. So Is Richard, you guys close? Richard is more think Richard is more Crystal Palace and more West Ham. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Is that yeah, a fair I, analysis? There, I, I know Richard. we're both are on the map. I know we're yeah. both. So Crystal Palace is more. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. I'm so at, you, my... live, you live near Crystal Palace, um, Crystal. I live near um West Ham. I'm close to West Ham Stadium. Oh, you're West Ham, and Richard is Palace. Oh. Yeah, I'm close. You live near West Ham. What? Yeah, it's like West Ham is like maybe say thirty minutes. Mm. Yeah, West Ham is my closest stadium. Mm. Closest stadium. No it's traffic. It and Millwall are the only clubs in that region, right? Oh, we don't we don't talk about the Millwall. <laughs> <laughs> Millwall's my, my my side. I've got Millwall, Crystal Palace, uh, Fulham. Okay. Those are the three. For Wimbledon. Those are the three closest team. Well, the old Wimbledon, anyway, as it were. So that's that's where I am. But um, it just it's a it's a it's we can always communicate and and contact each other and and link up via the underground or the um the bus. So yeah yeah yeah. Brunch. Yeah. I'm looking forward to brunch, you know. She, she, yeah, I'm she, definitely looking forward to brunch with you. Definitely looking forward to having a brunch. My ordering. Um, that's, that's needed. <laughs> for real, for real. But um, yeah, I'm going to be bidding you farewell. And there's no after party for me. It's good night, Vienna, when the time comes. So I don't know when it is you're going to be saying goodbye. But in fact, I'm saying, <laughs> viewers and subscribers, hit the like button. I don't know how many people are left at this juncture right now in England. Am I right? Ten minutes to nearly ten minutes to four o'clock. Yeah, I mean, we've got one hundred and eighteen likes. Um, so the likes are growing with the show, which is fantastic. So thank you to you guys. I wish I could do a live stream and get a hundred and eighteen. Likes. Haven't you had that? I'm sure you've had I that. Am, I am envious of this. You have had <laughs> that formula. Yeah, this yeah, I, have. Cool. I have. I have. But look at him. I have. But it's not. Uh, every show, Crystal gets a hundred plus likes every show. That's a lie. I I, I get those every now and again. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> you you you're, you're kicking back, man. You kick you're kicking back, man. You've got your views and subscribers locked, locked on docked, man. I I think people can take you for granted, but guaranteed, man. When when you when you're on point, it's a pleasure being on your show. Um, and I I, I think yeah yeah yeah, you can just kick back and. A whole of good conversation is always guaranteed so sometimes it's not so much the quantity but the quality is something that that is there but i'm glad that you've got the subscribers locked and docked and um they shouldn't be going anywhere fast so it'll be onwards and upwards for you slowly but surely 
if necessary. But great that you're doing collaborative work with the likes of of Crystal, and of course you're well known with um, uh, coaches' desk and and such like. So, big up yourself. I'm gonna I'm gonna bid myself farewell, and you can say goodbye to me as well, Crystal. No problem. But I'm gonna leave you guys and full respect, <laughs> viewers and subscribers. Lloyd O'Connor, Warren, King Judas, J. Russ, Ever Blessed, Malik, who was on the show. Mikey Ballin, full respect, and um, Richard, Richard, where, where are you love. running to? You've only been here for one minute. <laughs> she's a real, real sweet talker. The reggae girls, we salute. They've gone past stage one, nothing's taken for granted in stage two, but it's a real pleasure. And um, it, it's great stuff to know that the reggae girls are being spoken about with enthusiasm. Um, we're waxing lyrical and we're wishing them well because there is more work. So we're encouraging them. Look, there is work to be done, more work to be done. But you guys are seemingly up to the task for the challenges that lay ahead. Vin at the realm, at the at the, at the, the head of the, um, <clears throat> the, the, the bandwagon, as it were, but it's not a bandwagon. This is a real movement. And the team is um, relying on you to help them um, navigate what's going to be a, a tough set of games coming up so vin all the best to you i'm sure he'll be watching one of these programs uh in the not too distant future and uh yeah reggae girls we're proud of you each and every one of you lots of work to be done but we have every confidence and you're more than welcome onto the platforms um and um yeah keep the lines open it's a pleasure crystal you've been doing outstanding work formula full respect as ever you don't know so guys um before i forget my manners massive thank you to you guys there in the comment section just to remind you all i will be over on formula sports tomorrow i won't be doing nothing on my channel i am considering coming back on friday bit of a light-hearted conversation there if i do come back good friday conversation i'm gonna warn you i might be eating my fish um whilst i've done my live stream why not all my bun and cheese something along those lines so brace happy yourself good friday one and all happy good friday thanks for the reminder happy good friday yes. to one and all and um yeah safe journey safe travel and let's not forget coach karumi who was on earlier on the show um, yes great okay. having him on and our thoughts are, are with him he, he made a great point, as you know, Crystal and Formula. He made a point there around coming onto the show. Football takes his mind off some certain troubles, um, everyday troubles in, in, in life. So our thoughts are with uh, Coach Karumi at this time. And it's a really telling point that football is a safe haven for many people. It's a feel-good factor. And um, that's why we want and, and hope for the best when it comes to the the, the international football teams represented and and um that they they're, they're given every chance to flourish and not be taken for granted and um disrespected in any way so that's why we're not standing up for incompetency um where it doesn't have to be in place am i right crystal you're absolutely spot on uh, we're definitely going to be rooting out the incompetency in a respectful light obviously um because that's what we want we want to just grow into a habit where we all respect each other be it my fellow um guest speakers or panelists or guys in the comment section um subsequently we also look at the federation even though some people might not be in favor of them at the end of the day they're still human beings so they still deserve to be um respected no matter how harshly we critique them um also the respect to the coaching staff the gaffer and his coaching setup and the team at the end of the day we all have one thing in common we're human beings and nobody wants to be disrespected that's an absolute fact um so before i forget my manners one last time um you guys in the comment section you have been absolutely outstanding the ultimate 12th man thank you i think you guys have taken that like up to 122 now so the program is growing in popularity in terms of conversation and hopefully long may it continue on Friday, um, I might just be quite laid back with you guys. Might still talk about the reggae girls, but maybe nothing too in depth, something short and sweet. Um, and again, to my lovely panelists, Mr. Richard Stevens, Mr. Formula Sports here, Mr. Malik Mills, Mr. Um, who else was on here? Mr. Mikey Ballin was here, Mr. Coach Karumi. I don't think I'm forgetting anyone. If I am, I do apologize. Um, Guys, remember to check me out on Formula Sports tomorrow, 6 p.m. 
UK time, that's 12 o'clock um, Jamaica time. And we will be over there mashing things up, and it's going to be a quality view, so you do not want to miss it. If you are new to my channel, please do go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And also don't forget to hit the like button on your way out. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. Final words from yourself, Formula, and Richard? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm having an early night, relatively speaking, so I'd like to say again, <laughs> thank you very much, Crystal for hosting the show even in your absence you are still a presence and full salutes to you for supporting the reggae girls and um uh, keeping the the fire burning so full You're respect welcome, absolutely and formula i heard you loud and clear man you said you were feeling the way you said you were feeling the way well formula when it comes to the likes and subscribe watch her. trust me on this i'm gonna find a couple of devices in my yard and i've got them and i'm gonna be hitting the like share and subscribe button the moment the moment you devote so full respect formula <laughs> like share and subscribe to the formula sports channel we don't want to take him for granted quality always assured peace and love a gun a gun full respect good night sir good night to you guys there in jamaica and across the globe i'm going to be back um preferably on friday if you don't see me on friday maybe because i'm too busy eating my fish and my bun and cheese um priorities i like to call it i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week i do hope you have a fabulous good friday when it comes i hope it's a great friday a matter of fact and if i don't see you between now and the end of the week do have a fabulous weekend i will be back over the weekend no doubt and you know how this one goes guys thank you for sitting with me for the best part of i can't even tell my clock has stopped, stopped counting so i don't know how long i've been here maybe over three hours i feel like we've been talking for over three hours so for the best part of three hours plus i think thank you for tuning in to myself and my wonderful hosts and co-hosts panelists the whole lot until next time take care i'm john barnes and you're watching tarawa tv with Crystal Davis.